Hello, hello. A very good afternoon to you. Welcome to another live stream with me, 320 Sim Pilot. I hope you're all doing very well. Great to see you here. And uh, thank you for joining us for this flight. We're going to do an intra Europe flight. We haven't done one of those for a little while, I think. Um, so we're going to be going from here in Rome, Fumicino, down to the island of Crete. So I'm sure people, even if they live in sunny Italy, need to go on holiday to a Greek island every now and then for some halloumi and sunshine. So that's what we're going to be doing today. And of course, we're going to be taking the just wonderful 1950s man delivery uh, by Paddy um, for this flight. Uh, it's been uh, something I've been looking forward to doing. And we weren't necessarily going to stream the Phoenix again because I know I've done it two or three flights in a row now. But uh, I couldn't resist. We had to get this livery in the air as soon as possible. Thanks for the follow, Centurio. Uh, yeah, so I hope you don't mind. Uh, and of course, the Phoenix is going to be a big part of the channel anyway, <laughs> being the one of the best, if not the, the best Airbus simulation we've got at the moment. So it, it's it's going to be something we're going to be using, obviously. So it's uh, it's here. And amazing work by Paddy, of course. So we're going to have a look around the livery in just a moment. Uh, flight time today, 1 hour 45. So it's not the shortest flight ever. We're going to go to Harnia, the, so the second Crete airport. There is also Arachlin. Now, we'll have the option to choose either on route. At the moment, I've planned and flight planned into Harnia. Uh, I'm not sure. Where did Simbri the alternate as the alternate is Athens so we're gonna have more than enough fuel to get to uh, <laughs> to get to uh, Iraq and if we choose to go there instead so we'll talk about that en route it's a lovely day in Europe as you can see just beautiful beautiful skies let me just make sure we have got live weather on actually before I get too happy about that yep there we go uh, and I am connected to VATSIM I don't think we have a center here at the moment oh we do Rome have Venatus and everything so we're gonna have the full the full show for you so uh, thank you all and let me just jump into the chat briefly. Sorry we started a bit late. Uh, Pol9, thanks so much for your 10 euro super chat. Really appreciate it. Always far too generous, Pol9. I did get your message uh, and I will reply. Um, but yes, failures are something we'll be looking at with the Phoenix in future. And thank you so much for a very kind donation and supporting the channel. Really appreciate it, Pol9. Thanks for coming along and I hope you're doing very well. Hello there indeed to you. <laughs> uh, so we're out here on both Twitch and YouTube. So... If you're on Twitch, I'll just dive in there first, as I always go to YouTube first. So, uh, Mien, good to see you. Uh, Tony3000, thanks for coming along. Lauren V, thanks for moderating over there. Apologies for the slight delay indeed. Um, that's my fault not getting things ready, a few technical hitches. But here we are, which is great. Uh, King Taco says, finally, after watching so many hours of YouTube videos to help me have fun with a 320, I'm actually online for a live stream. Yes, excellent. Thanks for joining us. Uh, it's 5.30 p.m. from a nap, <laughs> says me and Mr. Trickster says, what, two streams in a row? Indeed, we did stream yesterday. Only on Twitch we did some fun with the Top Gun Maverick expansion for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So just a bit of fun. Something uh, something a bit different. But yeah, that stuff tends to be on Twitch. Last stage, good to see you, Dougal. Thanks for coming along as ever. Uh, let me just see... Okay... Uh, stand by. What's going on here? Sorry, one. Okay, I think Twitch is back. Okay, good. How's YouTube doing? Are you all hearing me on YouTube? Because is back. Good stuff. Okay. Uh, thank you again to Paul Nine for that kind donation. Uh, and jumping into YouTube, there's loads and loads of messages. Four Prawns, good to see you. Thanks so much for supporting the channel as well. Four Prawns, really appreciate it. Four Prawns as well. The weather, beautiful here in Rhodes. So I guess Crete will be similar, but it's dinner time here, so have a good flight. Enjoy your time in Rhodes for that dinner. Four Prawns, very jealous. Thanks so much for coming along. Richard V, thanks for coming along to moderate. Dave, good to see you. Had a nightmare at work. Oh, no. Um, so, yeah, enjoy your four-day weekend. Definitely great to see you here. Freddie, good to have you. Chick Point, great to see you here as well. Lauren V, thanks for moderating on YouTube as well. I'm sorry, I'm going to miss loads of names. Brian, Rabbit74, good to see you here. Uh, Kelpie, uh, 777, Elitis Maggie, uh, Captain Wazza, thanks for coming to moderate. And Pole 9 as well, good to see you. As we said, already oh, said hello to Pole 9, of course. Um, loads of those messages. Rock on, good to have you back. I hope you're doing very well. Right, so um, let me merge the chats. Let's see if I can get that to work. Good. Rome is only ground and tower for now. So be, okay, that's fine. The clicking noise is the fan blades ticking over in the wind. They are just windmilling around. This is the sort of noise they make. China is Arnav only. Indeed, Tango Lima. That's uh, what we'll be doing. So, non-position approach when we get down there. We're also going to fly with failures on today. George, thanks for your follow. Um, all good on YouTube. Excellent news. Excellent news. Okay, because uh, I get I can see the preview on Twitch quite easily, but my YouTube preview just doesn't, doesn't give me anything useful. Uh, it seems to have got stuck. Um 
so that's not going to help. So, yeah, do shout if you're having trouble. Joshua, see you next time then if you can't join us. Thanks so much for coming along. Say hi. Alpha Tango says, hey there, really enjoyed your videos. Have 3,600 hours on the A320 as cabin crew and notice a constant rocking left to right while in flight. Is that a thing or am I crazy? <laughs> there shouldn't be a constant rocking. No, I, I, I wouldn't say so. But um, it's possible if you're in the rear of the air, if, you're, if you work in the rear galley or you're around the rear of the airplane, um, swept wing aircraft have what's called Dutch roll and then they have a yaw damper to counteract it. So what that is, is there's a natural instability. Mo airplanes are generally very stable, but there's something that yaw dampers need to do to counteract it. So what, what will happen is you can feel it in the back of longer airplanes. So maybe 321s. Oh, audio's down again. Disaster. I don't know why. I'm not changing anything here. Let me just check. We are connected via cable to my internet, which was upgraded. Oh, dear. Stephen R, thanks for coming along. Paddy, good to see you. Thanks for joining us, Paddy. Thank you for the amazing work on the livery. Can't see around, but we'll see you next time. Thank you so much, Paddy. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna show it off properly soon. Um, yeah, okay. I don't know what's going on with the. Hmm. Just trying to think if there's a way I can ease the connection. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. We'll see what happens. This is how I normally have it. So I don't think I'm doing anything different, particularly. Get rid of that. Probably a problem is I probably stream at the worst time from when everyone's online. Oh, but there we go. Okay, sounds back. Okay, Mr. Marley, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, so questions and so on will come up. Uh, I'm happy to take questions about the Airbus as we go round. What we're going to do is get loaded up and get underway. It's cold and dark, but we're not going to spend too much time focused on that. I have the videos now, the full tutorial series from cold and dark to landing again. So I'm not going to um, spend too much time on those. And I'll look more at the chat once we get underway. Just trying to get our departure times a bit closer. We're, we run regularly about an hour to an hour and a half to get in the air, uh, which is fine on some days. But um, for normal Airbus streams, we should probably be a little bit uh, a little bit quicker than that. But we will have to <laughs> delay today's departure just for a walk around of this lovely livery. So it's no easy task to get uh, aircraft in any simulator to show or look like bare metal. So it's a great piece of work by Paddy. And I think... Um, window seat also did a bit of testing on this one so thank you to window seat as well but here you go you can see a lot of the streaks of the grime that the phoenix has has been kept which is as you can see it curves over the wing this is typical of these aircraft you wouldn't see it so much unless the plane's not been cleaned it's often from the icing fluid it's particularly noticeable but there you go so that um, grime is all there present and correct and then you've got the, the black leading edges, a bit reminiscent of the 1950s style aircraft where they'd have um, inflatable boots probably along those parts of the wing. I absolutely love the wingtip fence design. I think that looks great. <laughs> Very striking. And that obviously matches up with the, the tail. This is a livery of G-SIM X, which is the first aircraft. I don't have a, a G, my original G-SIM X livery. It's one I made in X-Plane 11 on the Tolis A321. I don't have a version for it um, in Microsoft Flight Simulator yet. So that's something I, I should probably look at seeing if I can convert it over and probably modernize it a little bit from what we originally had, but it's very striking, very bright. <laughs> um, and then as we move forwards, uh, you've got little details, Manta Airlines in the retro font at the front, which I really like. And then as we come around to the nose, we get that sort of nose covered up. This is quite a common style of the time heading around, which you can't have bare metal on the radome, of course, so that needs to be painted. So that's nice. And then 320 simple written on the side. So yeah, as ever, fantastic work by um, by Paddy. That clicking noise, there it is. It's the um, fan blades just ticking over. Now, I couldn't tell you what's making the noise, whether it's the root of the blade clacking or whether it's the bearings inside clacking. I don't actually know, I must say, but it's very distinctive sound you get when aircraft uh, IE engines don't do it so much, but lots of lots of jet engines do. So there you go. It's going to look lovely for the flight, I'm sure. Lovely weather at both ends. And as I said, non-position approach. We'll have failures on. That's going to be the new standard for the Phoenix, like we did for the TODIS. Um, I've got them set to slightly higher than normal, so we'll see how many things go wrong on this flight. I don't know what the uh, the ratio is. Look at that grime. <laughs> excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay. Right, jumping into the chat very briefly. Uh, Axel says, should have done Athens to LGIR. Heraklion, I'm controlling. Ah, sorry, Axel. Yeah, <laughs> I never, I, I should plan these a bit more carefully with where we go. Uh, when you spawn in, does your Phoenix go to start up, then cold and dark? Yes, that's normal. Yeah, it loads up running and then it connects to what you said, you, what you asked for, you, what you default it to. Hayden J. Robbins, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, English crew like the, the, the air tool stuff. So yes, we used Paddy's uh, Air 2000 livery on the dark side yesterday. 
So at W, Dad, you came along. You're having trouble with some of that. Okay, we'll see if it helps out today. Do ask questions once we get underway, and I'll hopefully be better at um, answering. Pole nine, and we won't do a random failure for this flight. I'll see if the well, we'll see if the airplane gives us a random failure. Um, but I will be doing videos detailing specific failures anyway at, uh, at another time. Right, let's leave the drone onto the flight deck. So the Phoenix, I hope uh, those of you who have it have been enjoying it. I know um, I saw a comment there, someone's saying that uh, I've forgotten about X-Plane 11. We haven't forgotten about X-Plane 11, but the, the Phoenix is, um, we will be back in X-Plane of course. I've got 757 in man delivery, which looks fantastic from AC445, so I've got to fly that. So we will be back for the flight factor. We'll be back in the TODIS. We'll be certainly back in the 340, 600 and the Beluga at some point. Um, but the thing is, uh, the Phoenix has been a um, a work in progress for a long time and I, as I've said before I've been on the Alpha and Beta team so that's a few months uh, of using this aircraft and not being able to show you guys so uh, it's a bit of a shame um, for me not to I, I really really like using it and I uh, I think after f several months of flying it around without being able to show anyone I'm quite happy to be able to do that so <laughs> um, that's that's my excuse for using it again today which does look a bit scratched up yeah this is the grime and this would be if someone ran it ran the wiper um, over a dry windscreen you'd get in big trouble for that <laughs> hence we have them off uh, in the check so let's get it powered up we have a gpu available and i've loaded in my flight into here we are departing in 26 minutes oh it's a bit tight but let's see what we can do so uh, we arrive at the airplane engine masters off most selected to norm uh, and we need to make sure that we have the wiper selectors off the weather radar off landing gear lever is down and the batteries check good voltage on both can I remember the commands? I know it's been a little while since we... Um, I think it's been a little while since we streamed. And we did our America flight last time. See you, Checkpoint. Thanks for coming. See you next time. Right. That's working. Extended power coming on. Let me know how the audio is. I've got it turned up quite high today. You can do it in 10 indeed. Uh, pretty much as long as the IRS is taped to a line. So we'll just let the flight warning computer come to life. And we're going to see uh, everything we need to do Properly, and it's what I'm kind of enjoying with the Phoenix, just like the fly-by-wire, um, is to have the, the the flow of simming a full flight, the loading and everything. It all just works. It's all done very well. I'm very impressed with it. And I've realised something I've been doing wrong, so I'm going to correct that today. Window seat says, "Here we go. Thanks, window seat. As I said, thanks for testing this." Um, uh, with Paddy and uh, for those lovely screenshots of it and window seat is our resident Airbus engineer who says it's the movement clacking against the next fan blade falling over onto the next blade and so on because there is play with their fitting in the hub they just fall and clunk there we go it's the movement clacking against the next fan blade so what's that so that's in the hub of the engine is that the idea um, that's my understanding of that so yeah so thanks uh, thanks for clarifying window seat Kelfi, thanks so much. $50 donation. Far too kind. <laughs> far, far, far too kind. I really appreciate it. I don't know what to say to that, Kelfi. Thank you so much. Way too generous. Really appreciate it. Thanks for supporting the channel. And I know you were there with us in the Top Gun yesterday. So really appreciate it. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, ETA of today's flight. Well, it's going to be a one hour 45 flight once we get going. Um, that should be pretty accurate. Although it might be, take a little bit longer. Uh, but yeah, one hour 45. And that's from takeoff. Let's say we can get taking off in about 35 minutes. So you've got about 2 hours 15 from here. Well, now I know why planes are always late. Pilots are chatting. Exactly. But yeah, thank you again, Kelpy. Far too kind. Really, really appreciate it. Very, very generous of you. Uh, thanks for supporting the channel. Uh, right, so that's thrown me already. So we got the batteries on. Um, flight 1 computer came to life. So we're going to do the AP fire test. Passengers are basically on the way to the dispatcher at 20... What are we at? 24 minutes, they'll be chomping at the bit to get passengers on. So we are going to help them out. We're going to get the APU up and running. Gary, someone like a video on the RMP radio management panel. I couldn't find anything explaining it on YouTube. It would be nice to find out what all those buttons are for. Okay, we'll talk about it today. Yeah, Gary, ask me once we're in flight. Today. I can definitely give you a bit of a talk on the radio panel. So APU is coming to life. We're also going to check uh, a few other things. So um, we are going to make sure that we've done the engine fire tests. And you would, of course, check down here, check for the fire light, check for the ECAM. So those looking good. We want to make sure the parking brake is on. We've got accumulator pressure and brake pressure. Uh, speed rate retracted, flaps are at zero, and they match the ECAM. And we want to make sure we've got engine oil, hydraulic fluids, and 
enough oxygen 800 psi so that's all good well the apu starts up let's run through our flows so we're going to put crew supply oxygen on ground control on we'll do the test now that you guys all seem to know what that is <laughs> i wasn't doing it for the last two years but uh it seems it's a known thing there we go uh emergency exit lights arm no smoking to auto someone was asking why is there an auto position this is to do with the emergency exit light uh the signs on the um uh, it gives a bing. The, I believe it's to do with the bing bong noise that you hear when the wheels come up and so on. That's why we have it in the auto and not just the on position. Seatbelts off. We haven't fueled up. Nav lights to one. Strobe lights to auto. All other lights off. I believe anti ice off. Cabin pressure in auto. Air panel. Let's just turn it down. It's hot in Rome, I'm sure. So we'll do that. Um, and we're waiting for the APU to warm up before we turn that on. Done the engine fire test. Down here, we've got wipers off bit warmer air okay that's the overhead panel moving down to the center pedestal gonna cage this we get the cabin air down yeah we could do that thank you again kelpie for your very kind nation and thank you to djw11 for super chatting four pound 49 again very kind thanks so much dj says hi great vid how does the takeoff acceleration of the a320 neo compare to the previous a320 in real life what aircraft has the best of all you've flown Thank you so much, uh, DJW, for the very kind donation for uh, the Super Chat £4.49. Really appreciate it. Uh, the answer to that is the Neo is better. The Neo, to me, has more power, and most pilots would agree. Um, so that's caged, that's off, down, uh, and just get this on. Moving down here, we're going to make sure we have VHF 1 and 2 and Interphone on. Make sure the Interphone switch is off. Uh, we're on the RMP, which we'll talk about shortly. Weather radar is definitely off, uh, and the brakes are set. Transponder is auto. Uh, sorry he's on uh, standby and standby and set to above ready for the flight um yeah so uh thanks so much for the donation dj and yes neos are better i would say in my experience now whether that's a written proven fact i don't know but they tend to go quicker once they're in the air um and it's only small but it, you can feel the difference uh, especially on a when the weather's right um aircraft the best of what i've flown would be the 320 neo yeah of the ones i've flown definitely it's very good very good performance so we've imported our flight we're going in 20 minutes uh here's our meter but we can get the digi atis which is good what we are need to, get, to do is go to ground services we've got gpu and chocks but we don't have any air yet so let us open up a window get some air through love the fact you can hear the sounds outside and a day like this with the sun shining in the front there i've probably had the visor down as well uh, but we're going to get that sorted soon mass and balance should be loaded in from the load sheets so planned 125 passengers there we go so let's load aircraft let's just do a let's do real 21 minutes get that underway um hopefully it'll happen a bit quicker what is going on today are we back it looks like we're back on twitch how's youtube doing Uh, Frank says, how often do you open the window in the warmer months? All the time. The only problem is it depends where they fit the equipment. But uh, the left side, sometimes you can't if there's the, the jet bridge is in the way. But it does fold inwards, so it shouldn't really be an issue. So you, you'd have the left side um, in, but the right side, you have this issue, which is the GPU will be outside. So that tends to make it not really worth doing. Um, but it is nice, especially if you go somewhere quiet or with an external power that's plugged in straight from the ground. Um, good, I'm glad we're all back. Excellent, excellent news. So, uh, so yeah. And thank you so much, Pol9, for the 10 euro super chat. Again, far too generous. Pol9 says, is it possible to control the lights in the passenger cabin? It's too bright when doing night flights. Absolutely. What you need to do is go to sim settings, uh, cabin, cabin lights. You can turn them off. There's not a control. There's just an on or off. So that's, that's the slight issue there. Um, but you can have them on or off. Yeah. Right. So we're loading up. Um, there's our load sheet. Uh, and I am going to carry on with what we're doing. So we're letting the APU carry on. Um, we'll see what the cabin temperature reaches. The temperature outside, oh, it's 26. Wow, that would soon overheat the cabin. Well, 22 is not bad. You'd almost think that was plugged in air. But thank you, Paul 9 for the very kind donation. Thanks, DJ, and thanks, Kelpie, again. Really far too kind. Uh, right, uh, we're going to uh, we're not, we're not going to Harnia, the other Crete airport, LGSA. That's the plan, but we could change the mind. Um, Depending on, we might do a vote on the way. Uh, good stuff. Right. 
MSGN says maybe the random failures include stream failures. Yeah, yeah, maybe they do. Maybe they do. So uh, let's. We can't print the weather in here, but we do have the digiatus already. So let's go to ATSU, and I'm hoping. Well, first of all, we're going to initialize the flight. Let's get that up and running. Thanks for the subscription and for the follow. And thanks again for online for the kind donation. There we are. So this is Manta 311 from Fuimachino to Harnia, alternate of Athens. That's all looking good. Hopefully we will get a load sheet soon. But I don't think it's arrived yet. So we'll leave that alone. Um, what we can do is go to init. Now it's funny. So this trip is still the official format. But I must say once you get used to the Airbus, you might find yourself doing it less and less. You might find yourself just going through the pages, as you know. Anyway, that's correct. Loading it in. Grant says, Hi, Captain. YouTube is loud and clear. Thanks so much for the videos lately. Currently sitting on a delay. Heathrow, but views are good from the lounge and your content is perfect company. Great to hear, Grant. Uh, I hope your delay doesn't carry on too long. And uh, thanks for joining us today. Glad you've been enjoying the videos. It's been a busy... It was a busy... The Phoenix launch was a busy time. <laughs> so I have taken it a little bit slower. Um, that's the old call sign. Uh, yeah, I've taken it a little bit slower to try and... Um, just get the right balance <laughs> but uh, yeah thank you for coming along glad you're enjoying it so there we go um oh yes and of course before we can carry on with that because it is fmgc time we're still loading up but we need to go to pilot brief let's download our flight plan i haven't used the fs lab saria so I, I apologize but that's the only one i don't i have never used so uh, i can't compare it i'm afraid uh, yeah, ATSU ACARS is different between the two, so sorry, so which is more accurate? Right, so, great question. Um, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to, oh, well, I'm going to go up a bit. Um, there are loads and loads and loads and loads of different fits of ATSU. It could be assigned to all different keys. Um, yeah, so please don't get too concerned as to whether this, one is right or not right compared to the other. It is, it's very normal for them to be different, so uh, I wouldn't say anything too specific about that. I wouldn't say one is more or less accurate. Um, yeah, I think that's that's yeah, loads and loads of versions of ACARS. Airlines will choose their own. They can choose exactly what's in each line and all sorts. Uh, sort of window seats, seen lots of different things. So cost next thirty nine and cruising at three seven zero. Uh, I don't know why I'm using that uh, FMGC. Let's swap over to this one. There we go. Hayden, thanks so much for £3.20 super chat. Really appreciate it, Hayden. Thanks for supporting the channel as always. And Hayden says, I see what you did there. Indeed, <laughs> indeed we do. So thanks so much. I'll have to start flying the 321 a bit more. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Really appreciate it, Hayden. Very kind. Cosnex 39, 370. And I hope you're doing well. And thanks for joining us. Good. Uh, alternate of Elgab did load in. We don't need to initialize the IRS. But we can align it on reference, but it will automatically align to the GPS position. And we can load in the wind. Or let it download. Still don't have, we'll see a company message when the load sheet arrives. You can see the load is arriving outside. Or finishing up actually. I love the drooping ailerons. This would be a lovely flight to operate. I'd love this. Walking around in the, the 26 degree heat. Nice weather, clear skies, flying around the southern Mediterranean. Just lovely. And there's the window open. Love that. You would be amazed how thin that piece of metal is between the, uh, the frame and the outside world. <laughs> it is not something I get used to. Yeah, this this frame here. <laughs> I know it's supported by the window when the window is plugged in, so it's not quite as severe as it looks, but yeah. Anyway, I think they are pretty much done. We're just waiting on our load sheet still. I think you can request it again anyway, but we'll do that when we need it. Don't want to hassle them too much. Jama, thanks for the subscription. Good. GPS primary, so it's aligned. Wind data has uplinked. So we've done DIF. So let's just make sure we have the right weather. Oh, and we can load. Oh, we've already loaded it in. Uh, back to Phoenix. And yeah, resend load sheet. But let's go to my flight. Departure, Digiatus, just check it's the latest. So it's information November. I will write that down anyway. It's always good to write that out so you know what you're trying to say to them. One six left, one six right. Departures two five. That's what I would expect. Transition level seven zero, two six zero ten. Remember, you don't need to write most of this down. It will all load in, but we do need the QNH of one zero one six. So the big information that we're going to tell our traffic: we've got November QNH one zero one six. 
Um, yeah, the magic of the Phoenix is it, it does so many good things. Uh, I'm actually just going to press B. There we go. 1216, 1216, and 1216. Yeah, the magic of the Phoenix is that, of course, it will send all of this across to the performance and so on when we get it. So I really, really like that. I'm still not getting a load sheet. Fuel is going on. How much fuel are we taking? I should know that. Fuel is 8.1 block fuel. That gives us an alternate and 15 contingency. That's loads of fuel. That's more than that. And we know that the Phoenix currently underburns slightly. Kelpley says, such a beautiful delivery. Love how the chrome isn't perfect and too shiny. Yeah, exactly. No, it's Paddy is the master of this sort of thing. Very, very nice. Um, is this the update not yet released? No, this is not Roy74. This is uh, just the current release version of the Phoenix. Yeah. That's what we've got here today. <laughs> Lauren B says, are you really going to milk us for the single pens? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. No worries, Roy. Check points back. Excellent. You would indeed see the takeoff. <laughs> are you back earlier or are we heading off later? Still no load cheat. So let's... Let's see, what else can we do? So we know we're departing from runway 25 via Pepix, so departure, runway 25. It's not gonna be a Pepix, is there? It's gonna be, that's gonna be a second part of the departure. So Rome is notorious for this. What I might do is just get our clearance, but before I do, I'm going to, let's try and do it in the right order. So let's have uh, airport, 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 airport. Parking stands, and then we're going to have departure. Right, so we're going to have this here so that if they tell me it, I can read it back with hopefully some sense. Let's go to the right frequency, which is going to be LIR Tower One One Eight Seven. Now I've got a question: Who can help me with Hoppy Acast? I, I haven't used it. I've obviously in real life we use CPDLC, but I. Do not know how to set it up. I've added the Hoppy Acars code, but I don't know if that's enough. So I might have to talk about that with you en route. Because um, that's something I would quite like to get set up. Is it the wrong frequency? There it is. No. <laughs> I we need a radio panel. No. There we go, 1187. We need a radio panel that does all three digits. That's what we need in Flight Sim Land. Fumagino. Good uh, afternoon. When I say that. Manta 311, stand 502. 320, QNH 1016, request clearance, Harney at Crete. Manta 311, Fiumicino, hello, cleared uh, to Lima Golf Sierra Alpha, BD Sozak 5 Delta Departure, PPX 9 Bravo Transition, runway 25, initial flying 4,000 feet, squawk 555 Manta 311, cleared to Lima Golf Sierra Alpha via Sozak 5 Delta Departure, PPX 9 Bravo Transition, runway 25, Altitude 4,000 feet, squawk 5507. Meta 311, raise back correct, approach ready for push inside. Okay, Meta 311. That must, uh, I wonder if that's someone in our community who knows our call sign. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, very nice controller. It's a complex clearance, um, out of Rome it often is. 4,000 feet is going into the window, uh, and we want the so sat by Delta. Which goes to the south, and then we need the transition, the Pepix 9 Bravo. So that's where our flight plan point, my flight plan only went to Pepix, but you have to uh, have to have the transition as well in Rome. So there we go, that's all tied in now. And I'm going to go here. Richard V would like a CPLC tutorial. Yeah, so if I can work out how to use it on Vatsim, Richard V, then that's definitely something we can talk about. And uh, if I can get it working on the stream, then I'd be happy to um, to do a tutorial on it as well. Absolutely. Uh, I will say it in a second. I am facing uh, chart issues. Uh, one second. So now he's find the Pepix. Problem. There's a lot of charts out of Rome. I'm not surprised. <laughs> it gets... There it is, Pepix. So they all look like SIDs, but they're not. They're actually two separate things. SOSAC takes us down so take off down to SOSAC of three and then from SOSAC to Pepix on the Pepix there you go let's just check that that does match the chart plan 
zoom out or maybe we'll zoom in a bit to actually see what we're looking at 200 knot speed restriction initially uh, it's held all the way to rff 786 so quite a long time so we'll probably need to leave some flaps out don't know how heavy we'll be so sack tourley gone up to bare peaks above 100 but we're only going to 4,000 feet squawk code of 5507 thank you for the subscription to dean so 5507 that's in and we got our 4,000 feet so that is the clearance done great still no load sheet so we can't do our init b yet so um flight plan we've done we just need to do the arrival actually i'm just gonna put in a vor yankee for 29 for now into harnia uh let's leave that as it is and we'll put in the arrival when we need it so next would be secondary which would be a copy um rad nav nothing to do here but init b time we can't do it until we get load sheet so please that check can we have a load sheet it's quite a normal thing late load sheets very common if they're trying to work out passengers have gone missing people are late people can't get through the two and a half hour security queues things like that so let's try and request that load sheet again because this is still boarding here we're not fully boarded yet so resend that the reason we can't use this is this is live the above things are live whereas the load sheet is what we're expecting there it is company message and by the way you can do that in real life you can request the, mess the load sheet again <laughs> what happens if you get a, a wasp stuck in the cockpit? A fly, no issue. A wasp, you might try and hopefully remove it. If not, you might have to um, just give it a bit of a stunt so it doesn't cause any problems, depending on what stage of flight you're in. So, Logi, it's edition number one. Manta 311, today going to Rome to Harnia in G Phoenix 2 and 4, 0 for 56.3. Uh, with 7.9 take off fuel, so I'm going to accept that. Please. But if I scroll through, uh, I need to get the Efferent max air fuel of 31.1. This is the information to go into the uh, page. Good. So, the logic looks good and sensible. Let's load in those numbers. So, we said 56.3 and 31.1. Block fuel, we agreed planned fuel of 8.1. So, I'm going to put that in because we need not our takeoff fuel but our actual tax. Uh, block fuel when we go with 200 taxi so that is now going to load in next is going to be performance so that let that carry on loading Let's i'm reading really in a second i'm just uh, figuring out what i'm doing uh, departure a second. um i did indeed request win steven uh pole nine thanks so much for your five ten, nine, uh, ten you're a super chat really appreciate it pole nine uh, again <laughs> five generous of the channel really thank you very much pole nine says why do we have to set q and h on approach performance page what's the point of putting it in there if we set it on pfd after going from standard anyway so, Pole 9, the reason we set it on the approach page is because we need to tell the airplane... Um, sorry, everyone, just stand by one second. Air France is clear to uh, Paris Charles de Gaulle via the Xenol uh, 5 Alpha X-ray. Departure, initial climb 4,000 feet. Feet, uh, squawk 1,000. Francis 778, uh, that's correct. Uh, just to make sure the transition is uh, Mainbow 7 Alpha. Yo, oh, uh, transition Mainbow 7 Alpha, Air France 778. 778, correct, but for study for question of time. Sorry, the attack go flame, uh, ready for sure. Approved, uh, sorry about that, very sorry about that, something I had to deal with, but there we go, right, so, uh, Rome for Puccino, runway 25, dry runway, optimum flaps, we're not going to go toga, anti-ice off, packs on, this is the normal sort of config for taking off these days, here's the weather, 25 degrees, uh, we know the QH is slightly different, that's the current live weather, it's downloading close enough, calculate. Uh, but yeah, so Pol 9, so the reason we have to enter the Q&H in, into the performance page is it tells the airplane how to depressurize, so it plans its pressurization based on that. Um, so what Pol 9 is talking about is this page, Q&H, so the airplane needs to know the pressure on the ground so it can plan the descent You're pressurization right. of the cabin. Right, so flaps 2, flex 68, flaps 2, flex 68, and speeds of 48, 48, 51. So it's no surprise there's no split on the V1 rotate because it's a long runway. Um, and there we go, clean of 214. Now remember we have a speed limit, so we are going to have to 
Um, if we go to flight plan, I can see it there, 200 knots. So we'll leave flap one out initially until we get round that first turn, that first waypoint. So this is looking good now. Our data's in, our flight directors are correct, going up to 4,000 feet on the Q&H. Um, I think that is pretty much set. How are we doing on the loading? So yeah, thank you again, Paul 9 for the super chat. Really appreciate it. Uh, thanks, MP, for the follow. Right, let's see what I've missed. Uh, Matthew Presley, good to see you. Matthew, our American uh, CIJ pilot, I believe. Matthew says, had a gigantic hairy moth in my cockpit a week ago. Three and a half hour flight, half the size of my partner. That does sound slightly terrifying. <laughs> Absolutely. Jonathan says, I saw on Navigraph charts that not all airports say which NADP they prefer. Should we assume one is the way to go if no information? If you've got no information, um, it would be normal to have the same. So to do 1,000 and 1,000 or 1,500, 1,500. With no information, that's what I would expect. Um, if they specify, then it would be A. Uh, or, well, they might say A or B. But yeah, if they don't say anything, then it means that you, you can just do it at the same time at either 1,000 or 1,500, depending on what your airline has set up. Um, I really, I think it's a bit of a... I, I think the whole NADP thing... It, uh, no, I shouldn't say that. I don't know. I... I'd be surprised at how much difference it makes, but maybe that's, I'm sure someone studied it. APU bleed going on, get rid of the external power now. Let's close up the window. If you turn on the APU bleed with these windows, if I open it up, with the windows slid back and you turn on the bleed, what happens is the airplane's pumping in air and it's got that air outflow valve at the back there. Oh, beautiful day to go find this. So normally the air is rushing out the back. When you do your walk around and you come past this valve here, you can actually get a smell. You suddenly get a waft of the smell of the cabin, like the the, the, the materials, the cleaning fluids, the peanuts and all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, so, and then you get this valve, which smells awful if that ever turns on. But um, yeah, so what happens is, is the bleed air is pushing air from the APU into the airplane to cool it down. Uh, and what you're gonna get if you open the windows at the front is all the air from the cabin just rushes forward out these windows. So you get a good draft, but it's probably, if you're trying to, reduce your exposure to um, <laughs> other people's uh, air. <laughs> it's not ideal. And yeah, look at this, look how thin that uh, that frame is. So you have to lock it, oh, sorry, unlock it. There we go, close it up. It goes nice and quiet when you do that. Um, so we can bring back our tablets. Boarding is now complete. Let us run the checklist. Let's just have a bit of an overview. Is everything where we would expect it to be. Those are idle. Um, we're going to cool air traffic. Seatbelts can come on. Now we have the fuel, which is our eight tons, which is what we wanted. Done our perth. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, yeah, let's do the checklist. So, documents, normal checklist, copy prep is completed. Bar F1016 is set. A car is initialized. Part brake is set. Yep, and we got pressure. Fuel on board, we've got our 8.1 tons. In it B is loaded. Flex temp, we are flexing to 68, so very high flex. Takeoff speeds, we've got 48, 48, 51, 214 clean. Uh, next with the start clearance. Going back to the Phoenix app. So we said boarding was complete. We can see our fuel is on board, so that's all done. Uh, time to go to ground services. Let us. Remove chocks and cones. Let's remove the GPU. Let's connect the tug. Is there a queue behind us? Yes. So it wasn't our fault. We were delayed by uh, air traffic control. That's our excuse here. Thanks for the description, Corey. Thanks again, Paul Nine, for the very kind donations. And thank you, Kelpie, again for your very, very generous one. Uh, right, jumping into the chat. Are you supposed to say flight level 370 straight away or in steps? Uh, you'd fly up as quickly as you can, depending on what air traffic control lets you do, Stephen, or what your departure, your SID has as restrictions. The Phoenix is capable of RNPAR approaches. Uh, Rise in. Yep. You'd need them in the go around. We are running late, Nick. Sorry for that. <laughs> Jonathan says, is it mandatory to enter the THS or not? Some enter it, some don't. No, it's not mandatory. Not at all. Some airlines might do it, but it's not mandatory. Matthew Presley, is CLJ for a few more weeks? 767 coming soon. I'm very jealous. That's brilliant. Yeah, well done. Have fun. That would be brilliant. So that must be moving to mainline then, I guess, Matthew Presley. Is that from regional to mainline? Excellent stuff. Excellent stuff. Takeoff shift would be calculated if we were to um, go from an intersection. Colorful salmon. Yeah, but we don't need it when we're going from full length on the runway, which is what we'll be doing today. Right, tugs connected. It's time for push start.
Manta 311 request push start. Manta 311 push and start approved, facing northeast. Push start approved, facing northeast. Manta 311. Right, let's just get it right. Thanks, uh, the chop music for following. Uh, none of these shots are useful, that's the one we want. So we are here, we want to go north east up there onto NW. Right, back to ground, let's run through our flow. So, thrust levers are idle, windows are closed and closed, flight deck door is locked. Your range train are better ready for taxi. Beacon on, transponder to auto and let's run the checklist. So below line, passenger signs on and auto, beacon is on, transponder is auto, all doors are closed. Yeah, and the slides are on because the beacon's on. So, target's connected, release the brakes, start the push, run the clock. So we're about four minutes late, that's not too bad is it? Departing. 16.15. Yeah, actual 18. Three minutes late. There we go. We'll take that. <laughs> That's ground services. Right, let's get the engines up and running. So, starting engine two. We'll do two engines because it's not actually that long of a taxi out of here. Hear the packs go quiet. Love it. Frank would like various noise abatements to be shown. Okay, yeah. I mean, there's only really, there's two and they're not... Okay, they're not that different. A would just be you have a lower thrust reduction and then you carry on climbing after the thrust is reduced and then you lower the nose later. It's not too different, but yeah, we can certainly do that. I'm way behind on the chat. When I use Phoenix pushback, I don't see a tug. Uh, yeah, should just use the default one. Oh my goodness, uh, Venkatesh says, uh, Super Chat is very kindly, $50. Let me just make sure I get this push right. Let's start the turn. Uh, they say, thank you for sharing your knowledge. Just amazing quality, super informative videos. That's so kind, Venkatesh. Really, really, really appreciate it. Thank you very, very much for that far too generous donation. Uh, super Chat, really very kind. Um, I don't know what to say. <laughs> You guys are far too generous, so thank you so much, and I'm glad you've been enjoying the videos. Uh, it's it's always nice to hear that they are they are enjoyed, um, and I, yeah, I really really appreciate it. I don't I don't know what else to say to that. <laughs> um, my terrible push is gonna gonna not fit in with that. That's what I will say. <laughs> but yeah, thanks so much. Thanks for very kind fifty dollar super chat. Really really appreciate it. Goodness me. Right, let's go straight back on the push. And I think we're going to stop. Um, can I get Ooh, an expected uh, uh, where I should Price place the my planning? Engines up and running. Back. Starting engine number one. Francis seven seven eight is going to be. Um, Restart the clock. Uh, Go back to Sierra uh, northbound. Thank you, Francis seven seven eight. Ask me again about the situation on the oversold flights, uh, Brendan, when we're underway. Uh, Peter Goris, thank you so much for the 10 euro super chat, really appreciate it. I, don't, I hope you can hear me. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll stop talking, I'll let it start up. Right, that's very kind. Again, thanks, just, I can't believe it. Thanks so much for your donation. And Pete, uh, Pieta, thank you so much for a 10 euro donation. Pieta says, this might be a bit early, but I'm looking forward to the landing. <laughs> I'm learning the A320, but I can't land the Phoenix. It always jumps up again after touchdown, even when perfectly on glide. So, okay. So I have a video, tutorial video that runs from 
top of the sensor landing. So I recommend watching that. I've got videos with the TOLIS. So if you search 320 SimPilot landing tutorial, I've got videos with the TOLIS and the A320 in Microsoft Flight Simulator that will hopefully help. But I am going to do one with the Phoenix because I'm hearing this a lot and um, I want to I want to get to the bottom of it because I I fly this airplane like the others. Uh, so and that's how I tested it. Um, so. Yeah, I want to get to the bottom of it and see see what's going on. So yeah, but so kind. Thank you, Pieter. Really appreciate the tenure donation. Thank you very much. Right, uh, so engines are both up and running. Back to norm. APU bleed no longer required, nor is the APU. Then we're gonna arm the ground spoilers by lifting up, reset the rudder trim, and flaps are going to flaps two. Slightly unusual. We need to make sure we have the trim set. Gross weight trim of sixty four point three. Sorry, what am I talking about? Twenty 29 pretty much where it is zero it's a very well trimmed airplane good gonna run the clock to warm up the engines as if it's the first flight even though it's nice and warm outside we do still have to do that uh but yeah so thank you again to um Bangladesh and Pieta for those very kind donations after start checklist ground equipment is removed anti-ice is off flaps config 2 green and config 2 blue um, we've got APU off, yellow electric pump off, that would be Tower, if we're doing American signal engine, trims 29 and 0, cabin doors armed, ECAM status. So cabin doors, you do have to refresh the page, there it is, armed and ECAM status, there's no STS message, so that is all good. American so we are ready for taxi. Let's just make sure we know where we're going. Let me bring back the EFB on this side. What I might do, okay, let's we'll see, jump to one six right I just tested American different methods here. Let's see if we leave the checklist on this side. Uh, is that going to be more handy for us? Uh, By the way, this happens all the time where you, you've started your engines, you're trying to be as efficient as possible. Maybe you delayed your engine start to make sure you had a chance. You know, you did it right at the end of the push, so you didn't have to sit there waiting for the tug to disconnect. And then you end up just waiting to cool air traffic and it was all wasted anyway. <laughs> That's quite common. Uh, LC 153 thanks so much for the 10 year super chat really appreciate it again far too generous thank you so much LC says been watching your videos for some months now and I've learned a lot about commercial aviation not to forget that I really enjoyed the videos keep up the great work thanks so much far too kind really appreciate it thank you for the very kind donation and uh, thank you for coming along I'm glad you've been enjoying the videos very very kind Manta 311 request taxi yeah really appreciate it uh I see. Hope we get that right. Glad you like delivery, Brennan. Brennan. Yeah. Me too. Paddy's hard work. What's going on here? Manta three one one request taxi. Manta three one one taxi holding point Bravo Bravo runway two five via November Whiskey Golf Papa and Bravo. Remember Whiskey Golf Papa Bravo to Bravo Bravo 25 Manta 311. Okay, so we're on the member Whiskey, then we're taking the member Whiskey, then Golf Papa Bravo, uh, and then full length up there, Bravo Bravo. Taxi lights on. Let's get out of the way. Brakes released. November Whiskey, so we're going all the way to the end here, then left and then right on to Papa. Let's get a bit of a wing view. I need to get this bound to a save. But yeah, thanks so much, Peter, for the 10 yeah, euro. I really appreciate it. Come on, airplane. There we go. Stop brakes. <laughs> so we run a bit of a brake check. Don't need to actually stop. That was too much. <laughs> that would be really annoy the cabin crew. Uh, yeah, glad you've been enjoying the videos, Peter and Isaac. Like to deliver, thanks for the follow. Love the look of the wing, love the way the spoilers move. Look at the amount of wires underneath. Just beautiful. Right, we should be on the member whiskey, so let's get over to the right place. It's a little bit fast, 15 knots. Right, so up to the end here. Then left, then right on Papa, all the way to Bravo. Seems straightforward enough. Uh, I'm not using any model matching at all. It's all very default. I keep it very standard. Today I'm using the TCA. I still haven't set up my wind wing. I do have the wind wing um, A3XX, which I normally use for the Airbus flying. Yep, 
nine degree turn so definitely no faster than nine knots beautiful day for flying I need to fix my twist axis on my Thrustmaster so I can use it for the nose tiller. Some other departures. Right, we are looking for Bravo. So we're going to stay on Golf. Sorry, Papa. Which is this one right here. So we're going to take the right. Pole 9, thank you. Pole for the 20 euro super chat. Fast and generous pole. Pole says, the pair saying you are amazing. Pole, way too kind. Thank you so much. Really, really appreciate it. I hope you're doing very well. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't Runway know what to say. Far too kind. Thank you. <laughs> you guys are being far, far, far too generous. Uh, I'm going to get out onto the main taxiway and then I'm going to uh, run the flight controls and sell them from over there. Thanks for the subscription to Loud and Wolf. And thank you again, Paul Nine, for your very kind super chat. I'm glad, <laughs> glad you're enjoying the stream, etc. Kasana says, I watched the landing tutorial and I had a perfect landing earlier. Excellent. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> Great. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if, if it's not working for you, then I'm going to do a, a more in-depth video for anyone who's struggled with the landings. And I'm going to try and clear up some common uh, mistakes, some common uh, issues with the sim as well. Frank says, it's always amazing to me how many wire tubes and mechanics are packed into the wing that you can see when the squad is deployed. Yeah, it is. They're remarkable pieces of... Um, Engineering. Right, we're on the straight. We're heading to Bravo, Bravo. So we're going to find that at the threshold for 2.5. Let's do our flight controls. So, full up, full down, neutral, full left, full right, neutral. And we would do our rudder if I wasn't using the tiller on my <laughs> pedal axes. Uh, and then the other pilot would do this. I wonder if you can click and drag it. No, you can't click and drag in the Phoenix. <laughs> Good. Uh, brief, we are going to take off from runway 25, making our left turn, keeping flat one out for the turn. We're taking off at 64.3, so we are underweight. We are not doing it. We could return immediately uh, without any issue. Um, and uh, that's about it. Climb to 4,000. Good stuff. Let's make sure we get Bravo, Bravo. I think it's going to be the first one. Let's just check the charts. Bravo, Bravo is the first one. Yep. Yeah. This one here. So I'm going to hold there. We no, 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 no. That's what happens if you use the mouse while I'm using the pedals. <laughs> it drives off. Frank says, is it a huge deal if you exceed 30 knots on the taxiway? That depends on the airline as to whether they care. A smooth, straight taxiway going to 33 knots or something. I don't see why it's the end of the... Oh, that's Bravo Charlie. Hold on. No. No, that's signed wrong. This is Bravo Bravo. I think that's either Bravo Charlie or Bravo Alpha. No, in fact, I'm in totally the wrong place. Let's not do that. We're going down there. <laughs> I'm not entirely convinced Rome has this double uh, whole point Romeo repeated here. Bravo. It looks like Morning it does though. Bravo, bravo. Wow, well, I've never noticed. So there you go. Right, let's go to the right one. Really, that was part of my moment indeed. <laughs> None of this is any real world use. That's it. Do not use my information for taxi around Rome. Have we got anyone following us? That's all that. Aside from all the view, the 550 of you watching. <laughs> Good, well we fixed the mistake. Uh, right, so let's uh, let's get the load sheet done. And thanks so much, Dana J. Suresh, for the twenty dollar tip. Far too kind. Thanks so much, Dana J. Says thanks to all your vids. Uh, I was able to switch easily from A32 and X to Phoenix. Now I need to catch up on some of your old 737 streams to learn the PMDG 737. We will stream the PMDG. It's going to happen. Uh, yeah, but thanks so much, Dana J. Really, very, very kind, very generous of you. Thanks for coming along and being a part of the community for so long. And that's a, a very generous donation. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much. And uh, yeah, we will be in the 73 at some point. Don't you worry about that. Uh, right, receive messages, load sheet, here we go. So let's just check it all worked. It is in compliance with edition one, so I'm gonna accept that. That is all good. Right, let's try again. We're going for Bravo, Bravo. In that scenario, would you be able to turn the aircraft to correct your taxi like that, or would you have to commit to the turn and have ATC reroute you? Depends on the, what the taxiway is like. Um, in that case there, we were still well within all the yellow lines, so no, I wouldn't have had any issue. But what you can't do is start making it up if there's no yellow lines, you're not sure where the boundaries are, you could hit a lamppost or worse. So no, it's it's 
you've got to be very careful but if you're still well in the maneuvering area which we were then no I, I don't think it's too much of an issue American 240 heavy welcome to Roma. <laughs> I was just about to leave my light, but. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I can't argue with that. Right. Delta, hold short. Bravo, Bravo. There it is. That makes more sense. It looks a bit more correct. <laughs> Thanks so much, uh, George Strait, for your $10 super chat. Really appreciate it. George says, awesome video. You have become my go to for A320 information. That's very kind. Thank you, George. Really, really appreciate it. 331, uh, Clear for takeoff runway 25, Matt's at 311. So we're clear to go, but I'm just going to hold it here for a second because we haven't done the checklist. Um, I don't know if the traffic is too close behind if they're on the way. Uh, so air traffic will just have to wait for just a second. Normally you just do this while lining up. Um, and then I'll thank you again, George. Thanks so much. Really, really kind donation. And I'm glad you've been enjoying the videos. And it's um, great to hear that they are they're helping. Really appreciate it. So before takeoff check, this flight control's checked. Uh, we haven't even done it. TCAS needs to go to TRA. Let me run the flow. We put the weather radar on, although we know it's not working quite right now. We would put the auto brake to max and we would run the takeoff config test. Okay, so that's the pilot monitoring sort of flow. That's why I haven't done it because I was got, when I got to the PM part, I started driving on the wrong part. So flight controls check. TCAS is, check I did it, T-A-R-A. That uh, means it will actually give us the avoidance if we need it. Departure brief confirmed. Takeoff data. We've got 148, 151. Climb now 152. Flexing 68 is all in. Flaps, config uh, 2 green and config 2 blue. ECAM memo is takeoff, no blue, so this should all be green. Um, good, well, we're clear for takeoff. Clear on the approach. A few seconds like that hopefully won't have affected air traffic's plan. As we're lining up, let's get the strobe lights on, the landing lights on, and then those light to takeoff. Good, and we're going to say takeoff runway is 25, strobes on, packs are staying on. That's the before takeoff check is complete. So we're about to get underway. That's not too bad, is it? One hour after we started, that's the same as ever. I thought I did better today. Pole 9, thanks so much for your 10 euro super chat. Really appreciate it, Pole 9. Again, far too much support. Thank you. Uh, and the description here is pair, character flying in the air with a red cape and a smile on his face. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Pole 9. Really very kind. Uh, thank you for all those donations uh, we've had just onto departure. Really very generous. Really appreciate it. So we're clear for takeoff. Uh, we're going to see landing inhibit, uh, sorry, takeoff inhibit appear on the ECAM. A lot of people are asking me about that or unsure what it means. So uh, I do have a video on the inhibit, but uh, it just means the Airbus is going to silence any warnings it doesn't think we should have. Right, we've had 11 minutes on the engine, so they're nice and warm. Going to go to ARC, got constraints, got the QNH ones are on fire, the new QNH set, and we are clear for takeoff. Out with a left turnout. So thank you all. Let's get going. I hope uh, the sound works out. Uh, yeah, let's go. Takeoff. So. Clock's running, 50% on the N1s, half side stick down. Brakes released. Two clicks forward, man, flex 68, S for S runway. Order thrust is armed and blue. So there's takeoff inhibit in magenta on the ECAM, so it's going to hide any nuisance warnings from us. H to 100, stick to neutral. Wind's coming from the right, getting a little bit of left rudder required. Rotate. Rudder to neutral. Three degrees second, positive climb. Pitching up to the flight directors, gear coming up. There's nav. And away we go. Set 311 identified, contact Roma Radar, frequency 125, decimal 50, Lanchard, flight, and we'll see you soon. 1250, thanks so much, Manta 311, thanks for your help, bye bye. Should say grazie. Gear is up, right, thrust levers back, thrust climb, climb, auto thrusts, I need it on the air traffic, so I'm going to have to put the autopilot in, AP1. Above the green F now, we're going to go from flaps 2 to flaps 1. And remember, we're leaving the flaps out because we're going to be Climbing away at 200 knots, up to 4,000 feet. Right. That all looks correct. Uh, let's see, let me just check. I got. I think I may have said that frequency, 125. No, I didn't. Easy 8252, uh, stand 613, uh, requesting clearance to uh, London Gatwick. There's an easy going. Well, with ACS information, I'll go to the next one. Hello, clear London Gatwick via the Right, let's just keep an eye on this. 1,000 feet to go. 
200 knots, 4,000 feet. It's all looking good and it's going to accelerate on me. So this is the trick. Don't get distracted at this moment because we're about to pass this point. When we do, the speed restriction goes, the 200 knots. I think it goes anyway straight after this. RF786. So the airplane will suddenly accelerate on us unless we uh, are careful to um, make sure we keep track of it. Just want to see if it does. In my mind it will. Yep, there it goes, so 250 knots. So you need to be ready because it will overspeed. We'll have a bit of buffer with the auto retraction. Anyway, flaps to zero. Disarm the ground spoilers. And the lights. And those lights can come off. Right, let's contact them. Uh, what are we doing? <laughs> I've forgotten the name of this. Sozak 5 Delta. Control, bonus error. Manta 311, Sozak 5 Delta, maintaining 4,000 feet. Manta 311, shout out on our uh, identified climb site level 170. Climb site 170, Manta 311. Another control in those are cool sign, that's great. Really happy about that. Often we, they don't. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, thrust cam open climb. Going to flight level now so we can set standard. Unrestricted climb if they just told, told us like that. These are all above limits anyway. Out blue 170. Lovely, beautiful day here. Manta 311, fly the rest of baby. Direct to uh, Pepix, Manta 311. That's good news, bit of a shortcut. Busy, busy though, this is why you need two pilots. Still too much for one person to do, really. Pepix Nav, which is the two way point, 32 miles away. Right, after take of climb checklist then. Landing gear is up, ECAM is checked, and Barref is standard and standard. Looking good. Uh, Firewall, thanks so much for your £10 super chat. Really appreciate it. So apologies for missing that initially. Uh, Firewall says, hey, thanks for the amazing content. Any chance for another episode with Boeing pilot from Heavy Division 1? Was really enjoying it. Okay. Yeah, there's there's definitely a chance. I don't know how the Heavy Division is doing at the moment and whether there's anything anything we need to discuss with it. But uh, yeah, I think we could do another video. Maybe I'll get them onto a, a stream at some point or something like that. Quite, quite complicated to organise with computers and so on. But uh, yeah. Yeah, thanks so much, Firewall. Really appreciate it. Uh, thank you very much for the very kind donation. Um, yeah, very kind. Thank you again, George, Anna J, Pol9. Yeah, unbelievable. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Firewall. Very kind. And I'm glad you enjoyed that video. Yeah, that seems to be quite a popular one. Captain Wazza says, I should hope people know the Manta Cool Sign with 61,000 subscribers. Yeah, you never know, though. It's, um, yeah, a lot, a lot of people don't. And then I have to sort of sheepishly explain why I'm not using a real one. <laughs> right, 100, coming 170. So we can get rid of the landing lights now. Oh, yeah. Seatbelts can come off. I'm going to go to airports because we're not really following any of those constraints anymore. Uh, and I'm going to go into RadNav, clear out the RadNav so we don't have any at secondary. I'm going to copy the active so it matches up with what we're doing. There we go. Right. Thank you, Misha, for the subscription. Now, I know there were loads of questions, so do please... Um, I, I just apologise for if I've missed comments or you've tagged me directly. I can only apologise. Ah, the Twitch stream's title is wrong. Oh, I did change it. Thank you, Dougal. It's a continuous complication trying to work that one out. The description changed. <laughs> there we go, title changed. Thank you, Dougal. Ah, yeah, EFB's unplugged. Thank you very much, uh, EFB's Kittis. That's done. Sorted. Uh, day, uh, Dort says, every day could be a Top Gun Tuesday. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, I put a very specific date in that title. It was a very specific title, so. <laughs> 320 knots, pretty sporty climb. We are quite light, so we should have no issue. Nice tailwind as well. Beautiful view of the coast today. Naples will be off to our left in not too long. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. This is a nice route. I'd like to operate this route. Christy, I have seen Top Gun Maverick. I loved it. Uh, but I don't want any spoilers, so no, no spoilers in the chat talking about Top Gun, please, for people who haven't seen it, because it is relatively new. Um, so I think people haven't had a fair chance to see it yet. While flying the Phoenix, it's that moment you understand why there's two pilots in the cockpit in real life, as Jonathan Gunn does it. Exactly. Each one says, will you make a video on the Honda Jet? I hadn't planned on it yet. Is, what are people's thoughts on the Honda Jet? 
Is it is it amazing? I like the idea of the Honda jet, not something I've used before, so that's always fun. But we don't do many business jets on the channel, so my knowledge of them is is uh, limited to say the least. The Heavy Division 7-8 has come a long way too. So it be okay, great news. Uh, Alfie says, could you do a VOR approach tutorial in the Phoenix? Okay, absolutely, Alfie. Uh, firstly, there's VOR tutorials on the channel using both Track FBA and Final App. Those are available. I did them in the tow list, but the same will be applicable to the Phoenix. And we're also going to fly a VOR today, Alfie, if you stick around. Uh, and yeah, in future, I'll do a video on it. But th that's the thing. Any video on the tow list will pretty much apply to this one. It's um, it's it's uh, far. It's just very, very similar. Reaching our level off, let's just wind the altitude down a bit. Uh, the version speed. Kelty has super. Ch <laughs> what? F one seven seven eight passing altitude three thousand. Oh my goodness! To altitude four thousand. Well. Kelpie, I don't know what to say to that. Uh, Kelpie is super chatted 300 US dollars. That is far, far too generous. I know I said that a lot today, uh, so I'm, I'm sorry, but that's amazing. Far too kind and way too generous. Totally not necessary. So I, I don't know what to say, Kelpie. Thank you so much. Um, Kelpie says, ever since I was little, I've always had a thing for aviation. My dad was a pilot and loved hearing him talk about flying. As I got older, my interest slowly declined until I found your Three channel. One, one, the monitor, Unicorn, one, two, two, three, seven, eight, you are leaving my space. Ciao. One, two, two, eight, Manta, three, one, one. Ciao. Um, yeah. Uh, no, sorry, let me get back to the message. So, straight. Uh, Kelby says, ever since I was little, I've always had a thing for aviation. My dad was a pilot and I lo and loved hearing him talk about flying. As I got older, my interest slowly declined until I found your channel a couple of months ago. Loved your vids and I'm now going for my PPL. Just want to thank you for inspiring me. Kelpie, Kelpie, that is way too kind. Thanks so much. What a story. And I'm really, it's really nice to hear, um, uh, particularly that the channel's been that, that inspiring. Uh, it's, it's remarkable. I, um, it's brilliant. Yeah. Um, so have fun doing your PPL. It's great fun. It's a real treat. Uh, yeah, we can't go up to 47,000 feet. We're going up to 370 for the cruise. Just come up and climb. Uh, yeah. So have fun with your PPL. Um, and I can't, can't believe it what a story and, and amazing to hear that the channel's been that uh, that much of a positive aviation influence on you i'm really really glad to hear it i i love flying and the idea that people are getting that much joy out of out of watching the videos and getting interested in aviation is, is a real really special for me but yeah the, the donation totally unnecessary but totally appreciated thank you so much way too kind yeah very 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 kind and you've been supporting the channel anyway um, so yeah thank you thank you and it's yeah always great to hear Yeah, I really, really don't know what to say to that one. <laughs> uh, Axel says, Wright spoke with some real world pilots. They state that the descent in VNAV is too extreme and the aircraft loses speed too fast. What do you think? Axel agreed. There is a slight thing with the Phoenix where in descent mode, managed descent mode, it is, it's got a bit too much drag. So it, it actually sits at the bottom. I don't know if it, what the reason is. Maybe it's a bit too much drag. Maybe it's something else. But it sits at the bottom of the speed range. Um, that's the only thing I've noticed. I wouldn't say it's too aggressive. It just ends up sitting at the bottom of the speed range. So there's, it's something slightly different. So. I'm sure uh, they, I'm sure they are aware of that. Captain Wazza saw the film last night, loved it too. Excellent. Yeah, I love the film, absolutely. Piano Learner says that 787 collab was great. You could do a flight data sim collab with PMDG and then him do the Phoenix. I know that's if you guys would like it, then that's something I need to I need to contact Flight Data Sim about that. Because it's it's come up a few times and it makes a lot of sense to me. Um, just spends I don't know there's nothing planned at the moment, I'll say that. Which RMP time says Garrickson. Okay, yes, let's do the RMP. Uh, Duckspeak says flew a few legs in the Honda Jet today. Nice systems implementation, but the flight model needs a little work, a little too twitchy. Interesting, interesting. Thanks, Duckspeak. Um, Simply Tom says been to Leon Solent and back this afternoon with a friend for lunch. Just tuning in. How's the stream going so far? Simply Tom, yeah, well, that sounds like great fun. So uh, yeah, very nice day out. Um, but uh, yeah, it's been going well. Thanks for joining us. Um, right, let me back to the right chat thank you again Kelpie I still don't know what to say to that unbelievable but yeah good luck with PPL enjoy it RMP stands for radio management panel that is this panel here there are two panels for the audio control in the Airbus um, and I was actually whinging about these on stream recently with Lauren B <laughs> who disagreed with me um, that they aren't they aren't uh, I don't want to say they're not terrible but what we've got radio management panel one 
Radio Management Panel 2. This is an ACP Audio Control Panel 1, Audio Control Panel 2. On the overhead, we've got no, three and three, the, the third of those. Okay, great. Uh, so what, what are we looking at here? Radio Management Panels are used to tune the different frequencies, and that's it. That's all they do. They just tune frequencies. So um, I can choose to have, this is my active frequency, I can change my standby frequency, and then I can put it over in the other side. That's the radio management panel, that's all that does. That's tuning VHF1 because I've selected VHF1. If I go to VHF2, I'm now choosing the frequencies on VHF2, my second radio frequency. The VHF, very high frequency frequency range, is the normal talking frequency and it's where ATCs are distributed, It's that, that's what it's for. HF is long range, a lot of airplanes don't have HF fitted, high frequency. Uh, and AM, again, very rarely used. This is for standby navigation, so I'm not going to talk about it right now, but yeah, that's not used in normal operations. And this is the on-off switch. And that's it. So I can tune any of these three frequencies independently um, by selecting it. What's confusing is if I have this set to VHF2 and this one set to VHF2, these are both now tuning the same thing. They're both tuning VHF2. In the real aircraft, they wouldn't synchronize the standby frequency. So if I change the standby over here, this is what you can end up with in the real airplane. Um, so different standby frequencies. So let's say you swap to that frequency and then you, you go back. It wouldn't remember the standby one if you went back on a different frequency. So let's say let's say I want to go to 12485. No, let's go to let's go to 12188. Let's see if I can show this right. So I'm on this side, I changed to 12188. Um, yeah, so you saw the standby frequency change, which it shouldn't have done. That should have stayed the same and just the active change. That's what happens in the real aircraft. So the result is this frequency would be something totally different, like that. So then if I wanted to go back, oh no, 1288 is the wrong frequency, and you go back, then you get this, this frequency, which wasn't where we started. You know, it's easy to get lost in this rabbit hole. So a lot of people fly around like this with VHF1 on this side, VHF2 on this side. So this is the normal configuration, uh, and I would put, typically, most airlines will demand this, uh, the guard frequency, 1215, the emergency frequency on VHF2, and that's all you're doing. So VHF3 says data, that's because it's being used for the ACARs. Let me just check on the climb. Uh, thanks for those follows. So Pilot, Soros, Mark, Roland, and Zate, and thank you again, Kelby. <laughs> I'm going to have to say that a lot today, but thank you, really appreciate it. Very, very kind. Uh, right. Um, so, climb's going well, 400 feet per minute. Oh, yeah, something I wanted to test out. Let's say we had to do the NTNTS now. So we're getting 400 feet per minute. NTNTS on. Nose is lowering down. Some discussion about how much influence it's having over the climb rates. So we've lost 400 feet per minute. I mean, that's probably a bit much, but then it's recovering slightly, 1100. It's a bit of a drop, but because I wouldn't expect it to have a huge impact on the climb performance. It does have a little one, but yeah, back to 1400. So that seems normal to me. I think it was in the lower levels. This came up on Discord as to whether it was realistic or not. Something I'm going to need to keep experimenting with. Uh, right. So that would be on VHF1. And we'll use that side, uh, VHF2 over here. Now, if you're flying from the right-hand seat, what I would do is, in the sim, just do that. Swap the radios over. That's not realistic, but that's that's what I would do to make life easier. So you've got VHF2 being tuned over here, VHF1 being tuned over here. Is that right? Why have I got the select light on? Oh yeah, because we haven't got VHF1 over here. Yeah. Anyway, but that's so that's not what you do in real life. But there we go. Right, uh, moving on. Um, this is the audio control panel. So what are all these buttons doing? So if it's lit up, it means it's popped out. That means you're listening to it. So VHF2, I'm now listening. So remember we're tuning up here and then we can listen and speak down here. So HF, ignore, we're not using high frequency, probably not fitted. So in the real airplane, you need interphone on because that is the other pilot. So you'd have that on uh, and you'd have VHF1 on and VHF2 on. So we're listening to guard and we're listening to VHF1, which is this frequency up here. This green light is the transmit. So whichever one is lit, that is the frequency I'm transmitting on. So right now, if I was to flick this down to rad I'm transmitting on 1228 if I was to flick it up to interphone then I'm talking and I don't need to try and hold anything down it just lit stays there and I'm talking on the interphone that's to talk to the other pilot you don't need that in the sim 
So that's what you're doing here. So choosing the green one. So now I'm transmitting on VHF 2, which would be on the guard frequency. Now I'm on VHF 1. Likewise, you can listen to VORs to identify them. You can listen to the ILS to identify them. You can select the marker to hear the marker ident on the ILS approach. Same with the ADS. That's all these are doing. PA means you can listen to the PAs being said. So if you're going to make your own PA, which you actually you'd use the phone down here, uh, if you're transmitting on that to the cabin, I turn this one on so I can hear my own voice. Otherwise, it's a bit of a numb experience. And also, you can press that um, and just hold it down. And when you release it, it disconnects. But when you hold that button down, you're talking straight to the passengers. Um, so that is used for things like quick announcements or emergency announcements. You can just do like that. It's quite loud, that one. Whereas uh, otherwise you'd use the phone down there for sort of normal announcements. That's what I do anyway. Um, same for cabin. This would be to talk to the cabin crew. So you'd have to enable it, turn it up. To adjust the volume, you use your scroll wheel to move these left and right. Like a little clock. Right, we're getting a turn now. Uh, Pole 9, thanks so much for 10 euro super chat. Pole 9 says, I've, all, I've heard you always listen to 1215. Do you do that on the third radio panel? So there you go, Pole 9. So thanks so much for the 10 euro super chat. Really appreciate it. Again, thank you for supporting the channel, Pole 9. Um, really far far too generous and far too kind. Um, and yes, 1215, we do listen to, but it's on box 2, VHF 2. And then in the standby frequency, you'd put the ATIS if you're going to use that, and if you weren't using the digital ATIS. It's a big old system, this, to talk about. So normal configuration in flight would look something like that. VHF 1, 2 in the interphone, and then if the other pilot's too loud in your headset, you could turn this one down. Likewise, if air traffic is too loud, you turn it down or up accordingly. If you then want to make a PA, I'd listen to that. And also, if you do that, you can hear what the cabin crew are saying. So if they're making a PA, you'll hear them. Um, yeah, and that's it. This voice stuff is to do with if you're trying to use a frequency to hear a voice thing on it, like an ATIS on a VOR frequency, something like that. Uh, and then the reset is, uh, yeah. Now, I don't know how to simulate that. Um, yeah, so the ground crew can actually call us. They can press a button under the nose of the airplane where they plug in the GPU to get our attention and it will flash on the interphone. Um, and their headset plugs in directly into the interphone, unlike the cabin crew. So on the ground with them plugged in, if you leave that interphone switch on like this to talk to each other, then the ground engineer can also hear you. And that could get awkward if you're making um, the wrong sorts of... <laughs> jokes or your uh, insulting how long they're taking or something like that so yeah so you've got to be careful with that you want the interphone off when you're on stand until you push back and they've disconnected but if they call you this will flash see that mech light there's a mech light there that will flash let's see if i can turn it on for you that mech light will flash so to get rid of that flashing you press the reset button that's what that's for Okay, hopefully that explains that. Um, the third panel is just left on the A cards typically. And thank you again, Pole 9, for the super chat. Really appreciate it. And thank you again to Kelty. Unbelievable. Okay. Um, Diana J. Shresh says, What is the trigger button on the Airbus to actually transmit to ATC? So. Ah, so that, that's my next point when this is set to rad you hold it there so you can see how the phoenix has got this right actually if you flick that up to interphone the switch stays there if you hold it to rad you have to actually hold it down and that's when you're talking to air traffic um, you're talking to whichever of these is lit up with green the alternative is the trigger which is this trigger here on the side stick that will just transmit straight to whichever of these is green whether that's vhf1 vhf2 uh, the interphone, not going to need to do that typically, uh, or the cabin. So there it goes. So that's what's going on there. Oh, Pole 9, thank you again. Another 10 euro super chat. Again, I, I really don't know what to say to this. Uh, Pole 9 says, oh, and one more question. I also have the Thrustmaster Airbus side stick. How is it compared to the real one? Is it lighter, smaller? I have booked a real 320 simulator flight for two hours. Can't wait. Pole 9, thank you again for your 10 euro super chat. I, as I've been saying, far too generous. So. Um, I have a video on the Thrustmaster side stick where I talk about it. It's much lighter. Smaller, I wouldn't say so. It's it's a reasonable size. Like in your hand, it's not far off. So I think size-wise it's similar, maybe a tiny bit smaller, but no, it's it, the size is good and the trigger is in the right place. So those will feel similar to you. Um, obviously the real side stick is very much not ambidextrous. It is only fits your right or left hand. Uh, so that is a bit different it's also a slightly different material it's a bit more glossy than the uh the tca but it's the weight you're going to notice the weight of the real aircraft the side stick is much 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 heavier by comparison um, but there's no feedback in the side stick so it is very similar to the joysticks in the sense it's just spring loaded back to neutral it has very good dampening as well unlike the uh tca 
so it will it won't sort of spring back into position it will it will gently move back into position i should say um yeah but thank you very much really two kinds krill thanks for your follow and paul and i thanks for that uh well, that 20, 20 euros donation there really really appreciate it right goodness me um i'm way behind on the chat so i can only apologize um yeah <laughs> thanks google yeah we are very busy today if you're watching on youtube and you enjoy it do please um hit the like button it makes a big difference Captain Mozza says, I had a lump in my throat through most of the film for various reasons. Hans Zimmer doing his usual legendary musical score always tugs on the heartstring. Totally agree, Captain Mozza. The music to the new Top Gun film is great, and it's really great that we got to have it in the Flight Simulator add-on. Definitely. Torgo says, Hi, would you recommend buying the Phoenix if I already have the Tolis A321 for X-Plane, if I'm going for the best realism? I think you'll just have to take that decision yourself, I'm afraid. It depends what you think uh, as you use them. The TOLIS is a fantastic flying aircraft. If you want more graphics, Microsoft Flight Simulator is the place. If you want better scenery, Microsoft Flight Simulator is the place. Uh, and also, Phoenix has things like the A-cars and so on. But the TOLIS has wonderful handling. It's got fantastic tools in it to let you do training and practicing. Uh, and the avionics works wonderfully. So, yeah, that's that's one I can't answer, I'm afraid. That, that, that's why I try and make these videos, just so you can decide. I, I've stopped doing pure reviews, and I certainly don't recommend products unless people specifically ask if I think it's terrible or not. Um, just because it's, it's going to be down to you, really. Uh, and Dimitri, good to see you. Dimitri says, whatever are your thoughts on the initial behaviour of the plane after top of descent? It seems a bit unrealistic. Well, have a look today. I haven't noticed the top of descent initial behaviour being an issue, but I do know about it getting a bit slow. So we'll have a look, um, Dimitri. Yeah, we'll see how it goes today. I haven't done many flights recently. It's just the, the couple of streams we did, but there's... Um, I haven't done any in my own time, so I need to try that out and see what's going on. Alfie says, how far from top of descent would you prepare? begin preparing for the arrival? From top of descent, 120 miles. If I haven't started doing anything by then, I'd, I would definitely start doing my landing performance and get the brief out of the way, ideally a bit earlier than that. Asagraf, thanks so much for your $20 super chat. really appreciate it. Asagraf says, my grandfather was a pilot and would take me everywhere before he passed. Your channel has reignited a love of aviation. I want to get my PPL, but sadly I fear I'll never afford it. Asa, thanks so much. That's, that's again far too generous for the twenty dollar tip. Really appreciate it. Um, again, I'm glad you, the channel's been able to um, ignite these these feet. Oh, oh, there's Microsoft Flight Simulator's weather injection. So we just picked up a tailwind. <laughs> that would make you jump. Um, yeah, it's really great to hear that the channel's been. Uh, let's go for the left. The channel's been able to inspire people with with flying. I, I really, really think that's wonderful. Um, and thanks so much for the $20 super chat. Fast and generous, as, uh, who says, uh, well, um, I hope you get the chance to get your PPL. Look out for scholarships. I don't know uh, which country you're in, um, but there are scholarships out there where they will be able to, so some places will, will sometimes help some people get their PPLs. But otherwise, I hope you find a way to get your PPL and get flying. Um, but the magic of Flight Simulator is we can all enjoy it and get a sense of it, uh, even even without having to go and spend our money um on on those expensive lessons because they are expensive um some people go to different parts of the world as well and get their license in somewhere where it's cheaper to do the flying where fuel might be cheaper but obviously right now fuel is so expensive that's uh, uh probably not as practical as it once was but thank you asa for the 20 donation really appreciate it and uh yeah great to hear really very very kind Right, I'm way behind on the chat again. Garrison says, what about middle position of interphone and radio switch and how to switch speakers? Okay, so in middle position, it does nothing. You can't talk. This is, remember, this is just for talking, this little switch. In middle position, it's not talking to anybody. Um, your microphone's off, effectively. The speaker, uh, there's one on each side. This speaker is just connected directly to this audio control panel. So it will just play out what this panel has selected. Um, yeah, that's what the speaker does. You can listen to VHF1 and 2 at the same time because I've got them both turned on. So now they will both come out as well as the interphone. So you can find yourself in a mess if you've got, let's say the camera could call you, the other pilot's talking to you, uh, someone's talking on air traffic, and then someone starts talking on guard, and then you've got four people talking in your ears. That gets confusing. Yeah, something that uh, the Apollo controllers had to get used to. They had uh, loops of audio that were very confusing. Uh, Garrison, you're very welcome. Uh, Mitchie UK says, Hi there, watch the Phoenix 320 YouTube vids. Never flown in the flight sim before, but watch a lot of flights and streamers. And it got me 
to a position to set up and take off. Can't thank you enough. Learning the landing. Excellent, Mitch. I'm really glad to hear it. Great to hear. That's exactly why I did them. For people who've never flown the Airbus and wanted some help on exactly that aeroplane, I thought that would help out. So, yeah, really appreciate it. Glad to hear it. Um, right. Thank you again, As, for the very kind donation. Yeah, Kelpie and Pole 9. Far too generous. Uh, right. Sorry, everyone. I'm scrolling through the chat. The radar modes. Mr. Trickster is asking about the radar modes. So I'm not going to talk about the radar because it doesn't work at the moment. I will talk about it when it works because it would be too too confusing, I think, to show you without being able to show you. <laughs> Birdman says... Do some pilots remain as FO because they can only use sighting by hand? There's a question for you. So, no. I don't think any... I, it probably has happened. But in all airliners, you need to be able to fly right-handed in the right seat, left-handed in the left seat. And the reason for that is, even if there's a yoke here, your right hand will be on the throttles. And in the left seat, of course, your left hand will be on the throttles. So either way, you can't rely on using that your 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 dominant hand so the other reason it's not an issue is because nearly all pilots learn to fly with their left hand because of course uh, in your general aviation airplane when you start to fly that will be you'll be in the left hand seat of that so no it's it's not as hard as you think to swap hands like that it's not like writing it's a different thing so you can do it in either so i i doubt it because if you got to this stage and then had difficulty it would suggest you should have had difficulty before you even got your license, I suppose. So that's, that's my answer to that one. <laughs> good question, though. Good question. Jonathan says, uh, don't worry if you don't catch the questions. Don't we say aviate, navigate, and communicate? <laughs> Indeed. As those of you who don't know, the, the saying is aviate, navigate, communicate, and it's that is in that order. So it's um, a prioritization tool. So fly the airplane first, Navigate the airplane seconds, talk to people thirds, in that order. Airdog says, how often do you fly? I fly every working day. Which is great news now, because two years ago, I wasn't flying at all. Frank says, what is the typical context in how an FO becomes a captain? Um, well, to get selected for commands, you need to usually pass some sort of assessment, but not always. Some airlines don't have that. But either way... Um, it usually comes down to how long you've been as a company and how many hours you have flying. As long as you have enough, then they want to put you in the left-hand seat. But then you have to do a whole series of um, training in the left-hand seat in the simulator to prove you can handle the airplane in the left-hand seat, as well as show that you can operate as the captain. And then the hard stuff comes when you go to line training, when you're flying real flights with you and the trainer in the right-hand seat pretending to be an FO, and you will have to manage the flight as the captain in day-to-day -day operations. And then... Uh, at the end of that you'll have a command check if they think you're good enough you'll get your command Nick uh, Sander says if landing gear were to be deployed during cruise whether accidentally or technical you'd expect some form of structural damage yes yes Steve is Steve-O is diving into the DOI home cockpits almost as expensive as real life flying I bet it is goodness me yes <laughs> but you only have to buy it once I suppose and it says, in the Phoenix, the cabin lights are only able to be on off. It feels so wrong at night. Lights are dimmed, not off correct. I hope they add slider. Yeah, slider would be nice, Elliot. Fair enough. Yeah, I can agree with that. Alexander says, if you're slow in descent, how do you increase the speed? Well, you can just pull the selected speed by pulling this out with the arrow and then adding speed like that. Um, or you can... Uh, well, yeah, if you add speed like that, you'll either accelerate the nose, it will put the nose down, or if you're in vertical speed, it will add power um, to try and keep that speed. Hello, Mickey. Serafimovsky. How do you get your views on the Phoenix? These are all default views included. Um, saw me said at the moment, that's what I've got. Jonathan says, France is way cheaper to get a PPL than Switzerland, for example, and they, uh, they're more helped in terms of scholarships. France PPL can be 7,000 euros, Switzerland it's 23,000 uh, francs. There you go. Yep. Big difference. Pol 9 says PPL prices are unpredictable because of fuel prices. Flight schools, what well, I want to go, said the price will vary a lot. Yeah, there you go. Frank says, I had once had a PPL, then lost my driving license and would have to go through some serious money to get a renewal. <laughs> Tell me driving under the influence. Yes, that's a shame, uh, Frank. But um, 
hopefully you can get your PPL back one day. But yeah, that is um, not the best plan. <laughs> Mr. Trigger says, I meant to say the PFD. Sorry, Mr. Trigger, what were you asking about the PFD? Flat plus green. Do ask me what you mean. Uh, Thomas says, do you plan on making a video about different types of landings? Yes, cat one, cat two, cat three. That confused me on the charts when picking minimums. Okay. That's certainly something I can look into for the future. Who thanks for the subscription? Steven says, fine, the Phoenix, I got an error gear not locked up or something. Yeah, there you go. And these just would like the 787 part to do a 737 stream. There you go, that's a good one. <laughs> I don't know if they've flown the 737. I don't think they have. 400 people on the flight deck. Yes, thank you all for coming along. Really appreciate it. So there's 135 of you on Twitch, so thank you all for joining us on Twitch, and there's uh, 400 of you over on um, YouTube, so really great to have you all here. And there's 400 of you on YouTube, 225 likes. If we could get a few more likes, I'd really appreciate it. it uh, YouTube will it will consign our channel to the depths if we have a lot of viewers but not many likes, so we need to, um, if we can get any likes, that would make a huge, huge difference to, uh, to um, YouTube's thoughts on the channel. Thank you so much. I can see them <laughs> arriving. Really very kind. Thank you. Really appreciate it. There we go. 242. 252. Brilliant. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Um, ADC for three minutes because we're late. So we're going to have to think of that one. What we waiting for? We hadn't really boarded, had we? Although we did sit there for a little bit with traffic behind us. Could we use that? I think we can use that as an excuse. Let's say... Loading was all okay, although we didn't get a load sheet. So could it be a loading error? <laughs> this is quite fun. Let's go for um, HTC startup delay A and Z. Ah, oh, let's do the load sheet. I think the load sheet was the issue. RLL, let's do the loading error. Two hundred and eighty-eight likes. Thanks. Thank you so much, everyone. Yeah, it makes a big difference. Um, so really, really appreciate it. Thanks, uh, the one for the follow and Nos and I am. Really appreciate it. Ian's flying along with us today. Excellent, Ian. Thank you for joining us. Okay, I'm going to have to drive through the chat again, so I'm going to miss a whole load of things. I can only apologise. Um, I really don't like to do that, but I, I try and read every message, but this, the stream sometimes are a bit too big for that. I am Burke says, what best airline liveries? Air 2000 tapestry livery is the answer to that question. That is not objective. Sorry, it's not subjective. It is objective. <laughs> um, if there are altitude restrictions, like on a star, 12,000, 8,000, can you just set 2,000 and push out in and it will obey the constraint? Yes, Fornax, exactly. It will do exactly that. How are you using the rudder aileron on the side when to take off? I use rudder. I have rudder pedals. So ailerons, you don't need to do anything in the Airbus, even really strong. You can use a tiny bit, but you don't really need to. Um, so ailerons, leave it neutral. Rudder, you use to keep the airplane straight by looking out and do whatever rudder you need. Mike says, uh, good to see you, Mike Basement, uh, who says, does the way you select between cat one, two, three mean that you would always try to go for as low a cat as possible? Um, no. You'll go for cat one by default. You'll only go for cats two and three if you've got a reason to do it because the you can't use cat two and three minima um, unless the airport sets up properly for it, basically, because otherwise it's not protected. There could be cars that get in the way and interfere, things like that. Birdman says, uh, I just wondered in the real bus, would you always activate approach phase manually or let it activate automatically? Manually. Nearly always manually. The Airbus activated a little bit late for most people's taste. Captain Wazza says, when I was 18, I had an offer of a place and an ab initio ATPL course, credit crunch it, and couldn't get the loan for the incredibly expensive deposit. Simming fulfills the passion note. 
that's such a shame captain was a um sorry to hear that but i hope if you can uh, get the chance to do some sort of flying again that you do manage um but yeah it's it's the way it's the ridiculous price that people have to pay to learn to fly these days it's it's not fair but uh yeah so sorry to hear that but i'm so glad that you've joined us and found us here um so thank you so much for coming along asset is in the usa so not a lot of opportunity to go to the next country over for a ppl no that's true enough I'd love to get a loan, but not sure how I'd pay it back. Yeah, so PPLs in the USA are cheaper, I think, than in Europe, but they're still it's still a very expensive thing to be doing. Yep. Piano Learner says, I know you're super busy at work, but is there any other aircraft that you fly for pleasure in Microsoft Flight Simulator, i.e. older planes like the Hawk or Twitter or Arrow? Um, well, I've flown all of those in my own time uh, in the, the sim, but there's not a lot because with the time I get now to sim and stream and and between work and then making videos, it's really quite hard to, to get the time in. And I, I um, especially when you find something like a video is not working out or something like that, and you, you have to start again. So it's been a while since I've flown Flight Simulator. I did load up Top Gun Maverick and then I decided I'd stream that. So we had a bit of fun with that yesterday. Um, I will use German aviation airplanes for hopping around some some of the, the really nice scenery like the, the Caribbean islands and so on. I, I used to do a lot of St. Bart's <laughs> circuits because um, I quite enjoyed doing that in, in various airplanes just for my own amusement. Um, so yeah, so maybe a bit of a bit of that. Um, but yeah, nothing for a while I'm afraid. Um, DCS, however. Again, I haven't loaded DCS up for a while. It's just been so busy. Uh, it really has been quite quite amazing. Just the last few weeks since the since the first, it's just like one four six. It just it's been crazy. Um, but yeah, you all know Heapler F fourteen. That's my that's my weakness. Uh, Pieta, thanks so much for your ten euro super chat. Really appreciate it. Pieta says, can't get my medical due to anxiety issues in real life. Trying to turn it into something positive by setting up a local organisation that helps others with mental issues by using flight simulation as a tool. There you go, Pieta. Really nice um, to hear. So, yeah, there's a lot of reasons people can't fly as well as money. There's the medical issues. So, sorry to hear that. I hope um, I hope things improve for you in that sense, Pieta, or that you're you're um, living your best life despite it. Uh, or I suppose, um, not despite it, that's the wrong phrase, but uh, yeah, I hope it doesn't um, affect uh, affect your hopes and dreams too much. Try to turn in something positive by seeing, setting up local organization that helps others with mental issues by using flight simulation as a tool. What a great idea. So yeah, really glad to hear that, um, Peter. And thank you again for the 10 euro donation. Really, really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, it's, um, it's, uh, it sounds like a great idea. So let us know if you do set that up. But uh, yeah, fantastic. What a great idea. I think flight simulation is a very good tool for, for that. It's something that's um, really, it's provided me over my life, hundreds, thousands, thousands of hours of pleasure, relaxation, focus. And now a little bit of exploring. We get to see a bit of the world. 11 o'clock M, thank you for your four pound 49 super chat. Very kind, 11 o'clock M says, what are your thoughts on the two in the cockpit rule? I hear lots of airlines have now dropped it. Do you think it works for its intended purpose? 11 o'clock M, thanks so much for the £4.49 Super Chat. Thanks for supporting the channel. I know, I know you have a lot, so really appreciate it. Um, that question, I don't want to talk about too much, I'm afraid. I'm sorry, um, but that's that's a bit of a... That's a big topic, and it's also an interesting one. Um, Uh, what I'll say is I have no issue with airlines that do not have that rule. Does that make sense? So I don't have an issue if airlines don't have a two people in the cockpit rule. If that makes sense, yeah. But I, I won't go too much further into that. But thank you, Eleven Club, for the very kind donation. Really appreciate it. Uh, if you want to ask another question, do feel free. <laughs> Um, but yeah, very kind. Cayman Pilot, thanks for the $10 tip. Cayman says, my son is 14 and wants to be a pilot. What would you suggest he starts reading now to make PPL easier once old enough? He's 14, okay. Um, also, would taking an aviation course at university or applying to a cadet program be the best way forward career-wise? Okay. Um, 
Kevin Pilot, thanks so much for your ten dollar tip. Really, really appreciate it. Very kind of you. Good luck to your son. So fourteen years old. So the thing, the thing to do, uh, things to read. G general aviation topics are, are going to be good. So I, I remember reading um, endless books. I had all the books about fighter airplanes. I had Jane's aircraft recognition guide. Uh, and then I found a book from, I think it was from World War One actually, and it was called How to Fly a Plane. Uh, just little things like this. I was just obsessed with it. So I read all of this stuff. Um, I didn't actually study any PPL specific material, um, but you could always, if, you were, if you're really keen, you could start reading through the PPL theory books. But again, that might be a little bit dry to read through those without actually having any lessons to put it into practice uh, or, or having an instructor to explain it. So that, that I, I, I didn't do that. Um, for example, I wouldn't say you, I, I didn't learn the theory before going. Um, but whether or not, I, yeah, whether that would help or not, I don't know. I don't know. But that would be one thing. I don't know if anyone else in the chat has any experience of that. Um, but I just kept kept reading stuff I liked about flying. And, and uh, there's a book called Fate is the Hunter. That's an excellent book. Um, I could I could definitely recommend that. But that's again, it's not theory. So that the if you want to if you want to specifically learn the theory in advance then it would be the PPL textbooks the syllabus which you can get from I think Pooley's produce it and, and several other companies not, I'm not sponsored by Pooley's <laughs> so uh, yeah in the, um, if you're in the UK especially um, but I'm sure there's different companies have those in uh, America and so on um, also would taking an aviation course at university or applying to a cadet program be the best way forward career wise so that would depend which country you're in Cayman Pilot some countries will require um, a degree and some won't so I can't answer that too easily. I would say ask as many people in your country as possible what the best route is. Go to the flight school open days, uh, go to the forums and just keep asking and asking and, and then you'll build an opinion of, of these places yourself. That's what I would say to that. Um, I always promote cadet schemes. To me, if you can have an airline say yes, when you finish training, we'll give you a job, then I think that's a good thing because the first job is the hard one as soon as you've got a thousand or a couple of thousand hours flying airplanes so a few years of a job every airline wants you well i say that depends on the time depends on the economy and it depends what airplane you fly so the other thing is make sure or it's just choosing your career path accordingly but i would recommend speaking to as many people in your country as possible and there is a catch to cadet schemes if you get tied into an airline that then fails it can be a bit tricky so there are catches and you've got to be careful what you tie yourself up, sign yourself up for. But uh, yeah, I, I think that seems good. But some countries might require a degree or it might be a good idea to have a degree as a backup. But it depends if you can afford a degree and flight training and all sorts. Certainly going to get your medical checked out to make sure you know what your options are as well early on is quite a good idea. I, I wish it could be my help, but I would just keep asking the question. Keep digging. Yeah, I did so much Googling and asked so many people and went to so many open days. Um, and you'll get an idea of what's suitable for you. Because there is, of course, the modular route, which is to have a job and earn while you do that and so on. But yeah, a cadet scheme is a one of the quicker routes, I'd say. But the other thing to do at, the, at age 14, I'm sorry I'm talking about this quite a lot, but it's making sure you give... Uh, do, do stuff that's related to flying that you can. Like, uh, if you can do be around the airfield you know um, do some work experience there that sort of stuff or in a hangar or doing some maintenance because when you go and speak to the flight schools and the, in particular the airlines for cadet scheme for example it will prove that you haven't just shown up on the day because you, you saw the application and applied you've shown up because you're obsessed with airplanes and flying and you want to be a pilot and you can demonstrate that by saying well you know in my I've, I've done my done, uh, work experience in the hangar and, and things like that whatever you can think of Um, so little things like that can be nice, but yeah, just keep keep the passion going. Uh, Paul Nine said, uh, "Super chat, twenty euros, really appreciate." Paul Nine again, way way too generous. Paul Nine says, "Last flight after retracting landing gear, I accidentally extended them without noticing. When I noticed I couldn't retract them at flight level one six, at flight level two zero to two five, I was finally able to retract them. Is that a bug?" Okay, so what was probably going on there was the gear can only be retracted up to two hundred and twenty knots. So you're probably at flight level 160 you're going too fast but maybe as you climbed you slowed down or your your indicated airspeed was a bit slower so the gear could retract because remember the nose gear retracts forward into the airflow 
So that's probably what's going on there. But I'll have to try that out. I haven't seen that. <laughs> there you go. But thank you so much, Polline, for the very kind donation. Really appreciate it. And apologies to everyone in the chat. I have... Oh, sorry. Is that too loud? Uh, I will... Okay, I won't do that again. Um, yeah, so uh, apologies to everyone in the chat. So I've missed a lot of talk there. Thank you all for coming along. Um, very short clip says, Is there a minimal setup to fly in A320 as a real pilot? Uh, well, there's the, the normal... The, the procedure you saw today, really. Mr. Trickster would like to see the modes on the ND and what are the differences. It's quite a big topic. Um, I'll do a brief summary now. You have rows on these three. These modes are obviously fully rounded, so you get the whole dial. A bit more like an older style instrument. You'll notice the terrain radar shows and the weather radar also shows in some of these. Um, so that's what they're doing. You then got arc, which is going to show you a slice of the map. So this is just a forward view of the map. You then got plan which allows us to, if we go to the flight plan page, we can scroll through and it will show us whichever point is highlighted here and it will show us what it is telling us. Uh, sorry, show us it on the map. Arc is just the current route in front of you. You can see we need to start getting ready for descent soon. Nav is the same as arc, but it's the full rows. So we get to see behind us as well. It's useful for seeing if traffic's behind you or if diversion airports are behind you. That's when this would be used. VOR is going to be used if we were tuning a VOR, which we will do, and you'll see that, so you can set a course bar, but it's not used otherwise. LS is just showing you the ILS, but interestingly, it shows you ILS 2, uh, not 1, so this can be used as a backup, but that's what that is. So the most common modes are ARC, maybe a bit of NAV, and certainly plan for the briefing. Beta's the Hunter is an amazing book, says Captain Wazzle, would read it again and again. Yes, it is amazing. Tango says, learn what you enjoy about flying, don't follow others. Very nice, yeah, nice words. Pieta says, thank you all, appreciate your support. FS brings me calm and focus. I hope to give the same to others soon. Work on it. Excellent, Pieta. Sounds like a great, uh, great thing. Brian says, here in the US, most airlines are dropping the four-year degree requirement because of the massive pilot shortage. Yes, good. Cayman Pilots, $10, thank you Cayman Pilots, says thanks very much for your thoughts, unfortunately there is no flying school in the Cayman Islands, so he would either have to head to the US or UK for training and potential work down the line. Right, yeah, so keep asking the question, check what the regulations are and which license you want as well, remember um, if you're going to choose where you want to be, you need to make sure, for example if you've got a license in the UK and it's a UK license, that might be no good if you're not allowed to work in the UK, um, or Likewise, if you've got a UK license and you can stay in the UK, that's fine. But then if you want to go and work in Europe where there might be more jobs, then you can't because you need to convert it. And likewise, if you want to work in America, it's an FAA license and they don't convert that. You have to do extra work. You can convert these between the three but um, and around the world, but it does take more effort, more money. So making sure you pick the right license that's recognized by the country is definitely a good idea. Airbus fan, thank you very much. Glad you like the channel. But thank you, Cameron, for the $10. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Arco. Really appreciate it. I'm glad you've been enjoying the videos. Thank you for coming along and saying so. Mr. Banana says, I find NAV useful for SIDS and STARS that have a 180 turn. Yes, another good use of NAV. Absolutely. Uh, so, Ketan says, Hi, do A320 pilots have the type rating for the A321, 19, and 18? Um, yes, 18, 19, 20, 21 are all on the same type rating. Uh, Kelpie has another $2. Thanks so much, Kelpie. Got to go. Thanks for all. Thank you, Kelpie. Really appreciate it. And again, you've been far too generous. I think your super chat is still showing up there. So, yeah. Thank you very much. Really, very, very kind. Just turn it off for a bit. <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you so much, Kelpie. Really. Is there FIFA 281 Tango on frequency? Oh, no, that didn't work. Is that FIFA 281 Tango? Uh, yeah. Really, really, really appreciate it, Kelpie. Thanks so much for coming on. Pong 9, thank you for your 10 euro super chat again. Pong 9, far too generous. Pong 9 says, how often do you see digital backup displays versus analog display gauges and artificial horizon, which you have now? It depends. It depends on the age of the airplane. Older airplanes are like this, yeah. So this is quite common on older ones, but the newer ones, of course, swap to ISIS. Uh, most airlines with new airplanes, you'll just see the ISIS now. So it's becoming less common to see this setup. This is getting less common. Yeah, less than half the time, certainly, maybe even less than that. Uh, but yeah, thank you again, Pong 9, for the very kind super chat. Thank you, KLP. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Kevin. Rocco says, in the Netherlands, the main air 
problem is that the airport staff is underpaid so they went on to do other jobs after covid but they still won't up salaries there you go yeah Lush stage says, I don't think it's even caused by the pandemic only. When it comes to airports in my region, it's also been said that the general industry trend towards lower costs and lower wages have made it impossible to attract enough new people. Airports with better wages compared to the cost of living uh, are not having any issues. There you go. Another input. Yeah, fair enough. Stephen Hart, you're very welcome. Mike says, what is your dead zone for the joystick? Because when I had to do the flare, it feels like I can pull the stick quite far before the plane reacting. Often putting me in slow. Um, I have a dead zone of about 2%, I think, and otherwise linear on the sensitivity. Rack says, landed Monday into a UK airport. Took about 20 minutes to get someone to roll a staircase up to the doors. The camera crew were chatting with passengers saying it's what the situation is. Yep. Google says, pilot rant. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, as I say, um, I'm not trying to suggest that this is the only affected industry or anything like that. I'm just saying that uh, with the forecast given at <laughs> four years, we're now two years in and we can see what the demand is that would give some explanation as to what's happened now how much airlines followed those forecasts or how much they did what they want I could never tell What I'm going to do, guys, we're going to go for a quick break and then we'll be back and we'll set up the arrival. So, uh, yeah, let's keep a window view so I don't hurt anyone's ears. Let's go for an engine view. Right, we'll be back very shortly. Enjoy the music.
and we are back. Hope you enjoyed the music. It's usually usually appreciated. Right. We are getting close. Look at that sunset. Beautiful. So here is the arrival. What I need to do now is that's all part of the go around. We need to figure out what we're actually gonna fly here. So let's have a look at our flight plan. And OFB. Arriving via PLH with the two Foxtrot. Let's go find the charts. We get Rome. Thank you, Rome. That's good fun. LGSA. PLH, PLH, PLH. There's loads of PLH arrivals. What did we say? Two Foxtrot? Now, that's unrealistic. This is not the arrival of an airline that would fly because it's just going to bring us out the wrong place. Um, so, you know, we don't want to end up in the overhead. So let's find something more suitable. Where's PLH on this? Down to the south. Okay. Start at the bottom then. No. 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 Okay, this isn't working. I have not succeeded here. One Romeo. Yeah, maybe we're going to do the full procedure. Let's see what the options are. So if I go to plan, zoom in. Let's get a 40 mile range. There's PLH. Are so we coming off? just arriving at the west then we basically want to set up for a, an arrival I'll show you the approach we can fly we do a VOR Yankee 2-9 uh, Levco so we need to get ourselves over to Levco somehow I don't think any of these do that they all end up at the VOR we do that so again we're just puzzle piecing here this procedure doesn't take us from here so that's the wrong VOR let's try the whiskey I think we'll be doing the whiskey. Yeah. I thought we were going to do the DMI arc, but I think not. Coming from this direction. Probably because of the terrain. So let's do the... Sud is unserviceable. No, Sud is serviceable. My sensitivity on the TCA is... Um, it's linear. So just straight lines, and then uh, I've got a tiny dead zone in the middle. KG Pilot, thanks for following good to see you. Katie Pilot, very, very famous. And uh, I'm sure many of you know. And also the, uh, if it is indeed, <laughs> I think I believe that's right, uh, Katie Pilot. Um, uh, yeah, also the very hard creator, oh, sorry, very hard working creator behind this uh, fantastic EFB that we all know and love so well now in the Phoenix. So thank you so much, uh, Katie Pilot, for joining us. <laughs> Sorry for not following before. Whoops, no worries, Katie Pilot. Great to see you here. Thank you for coming along. And uh, yeah, we've we've been very much enjoying the EFB on the flight today. So there you go. And to anyone watching, huge amount of effort went into this, and it's just fantastic, just fantastic. Although I'm now just um, trying to wrestle with uh, <laughs> connecting the dots of an arrival into a Greek island. So we've got PLH to Sud, which is working. So that's probably the one. So this is the PLH one X-ray. Let's go with the one X-ray. Which I've lost. There it is. So we'll take the one X-ray, and then we'll fly the VR Whiskey for two nine. Um, which bit of that? But in fact, before I do any of that, let's actually check the weather. It's here. This is the standard sort of stream where I'm going to do all of this far too late. Uh, two nine zero, perfect. Two nine twenty seven degrees. Great, great, great. So that all ties in. So let's put that into the box. The McDo. So arrival. It's not the VOR Yankee 2-9. We're going to do the VOR um, Whiskey 2-9. There it is. We're going to fly that by the PLH-1 X-ray. This is a real puzzle. You wouldn't think there'd be so many arrivals for a small island, but there we go. Uh, via Sud. So you'll see now, if I zoom in, there's no via. So it goes to Sud, and then it has the uh, VOR approach. 
but I need to actually fly the full procedure. So if we put in CERT, it will give us the full procedure there. And we just check our charts. That is what we want. Outbound, background, and in. Thanks, PolyVR, for the follow and Winkle in case you for the subscription. Because it says, hello, new to Microsoft Flight Simulator with PMDG 737. Love it, but the rudder behavior is sometimes working well, sometimes like going crazy with small speed, going right or not really responding. Ah, that's not ideal. Indeed, that's not ideal at all. Uh, Roll on it says, on smaller airports, do you ever just skip the start and just go to the beginning of the approach? Uh, yeah, it depends. It depends. Sometimes at busier airports, that's more common. Sometimes very small airports won't have radar control, so you'll have to fly the full procedure. I believe Honey does have a radar. But anyway, that looks right to me. So in, out, procedure, insert. There it is. So now we have a connected flight plan. We will see the top descent probably coming soon. Ah, amazing, amazing. This is just what it looks like. It's, it's remarkable. I was hoping to get there before sunset, but of course we're, as ever, running a little bit late. So top of descent coming in about uh, 100 miles, so that's not too bad. So let's do a little hat, as we talked about before. So next is the Radnav. Let's set up the VOR. So we're going to use the VOR Whiskey for 29. It's the SUD VOR 108.6 SUD 288. So you can just type in the identifier, but do check the frequency, 108.6. And probably both pilots will tune it. I know it looks like you've overridden the Airbus, but it doesn't matter too much. Uh, the Airbus can still navigate quite happily. Uh, 288 on the inbound course. So now, uh, I'm going to fly this using fine lap, but you can still just put in the um, information there because it is very useful in case the fine lap doesn't work for any reason or we get a downgrade. Because remember, we have failures enabled, so we could find the aeroplane do something a bit funny on us or it could lose its ability to fly final lap. It's very possible. Uh, there is the um, VOR course we're talking about on the VOR rows page. So you just get the uh, the course bar up here. No identified needle just yet. That will come when we're a bit closer in. Uh, but let's put the VOR one displayed and then we'll see it when it arrives. You can, of course, display both, but I wouldn't bother. I'll just keep one up. There we go. So that is the RADNAV page. That's all we need to do. Progress page. Here I'm going to put the arrival airport and runway 29 threshold so type in the airport and 29 for the threshold of that runway gives us the distance to go particularly useful today because of course on a VOR the DME is not co-located the, the DME is actually at the VOR so that number is not our DME distance on this will not be distance to touchdown it's distance to the VOR um, so as we can see here we're going to uh, have 87654 um, but actually at 0 0.4 miles will be over the VOR so it's unusual this way around we're actually a little bit further away from the airfield than the DME would suggest so it's actually not not too disruptive this time Jano H thanks so much for your five euro super chat really appreciate it Jano says thanks for your amazing tutorials you're very welcome Jano really very kind of you and uh, thank you for coming along thank you for saying so thank you for supporting the channel really appreciate it and I hope you're doing very well and I'm glad you've enjoyed the videos and uh, they seem to have been received well so I'm very glad so great to hear it and thank you very much for coming along today Paul oh, no. it's here Pole 9 has super chatted 100 euros. Thank you so much, Pole 9. F far too generous. Uh, and you've already put us so much today. Pole 9 says, This is the only way I can thank you. You motivated me and a lot of other people as well to go for BPO and get involved with aviation. You are the master. I don't know about that, but that's very kind, Pole 9. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's far too generous. Uh, and you've already supported the channel far too much. So thank you. Enjoy your PPL and. Um, uh, yeah, it's it's amazing to hear. I, I, again, I'm really surprised that the channel is um, is is doing so well, uh, motivating people to fly. I, I didn't. I, I thought it would just be people looking specifically for Airbus um, explanations. So yeah, really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Paul Nine, and thank you for all your other support and for, for um, being such a big supporter of the channel. Really, really, really very kind. I, again, I don't know what to say. We still got KLP's donation taking down out there as well. It's it's unbelievable. Thank you so, so much, Paul Nine. Really, really appreciate it. Wow. Uh, Procast says, how often do you encounter winter in real life? Very rarely. Very rarely. Given, hello. Thanks for joining us. The Phoenix does have FLS option, Patrick Davis. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Do, you want to, do, do people want to fly an FLS today? Let's do a vote. My Twitch votes never work, I'm afraid. There 
go. You can vote. Thank you again, Paul9. Far too kind. Really appreciate it. A lot of FLS in chat, but we'll see. We'll see. Could be a loud, a loud minority. Chris says, I've been seeing vids on this Phoenix A220. Is this an alternative to fly-by-wire or have they stopped? No, it's an alternative. Fly-by-wire is still going. Still going very strong. Um, oh, dear. That's not good. Got to let me change this setting so we have it enabled anyway. Now, what I'm going to say about FLS is I don't actually know the FLS. I've not been trained on it. I've never used it. It stands for FMS Landing System, I believe. I did write this down. Yeah, FMS Landing System. So uh, you have to enable it in your airline options. I'm going to close. And you can effectively fly it a bit like an ILS. Um, right. So anyway, that's what I'm going to put in the threshold of the progress page, performance page. Now we need to enter that weather. So... Let me do that, because that doesn't change depending on what mode we use. Oh, there we go. FLS has reduced its uh, lead for a second there. <laughs> uh, arrival. So let's just check it's refreshed. Uh, 2904, 27 degrees. Q&H of 1012. Great. Let's get our chart up. Excuses in early. <laughs> yes, exactly, Brennan. That's what we're doing. Um, VR whiskey for 2 9 with 13 10 continuous descent final approach. So 13 10 minima. This stuff won't change, I believe, flying in FLS. Uh, we'll talk about what FLS actually means. So this FLS in the Phoenix is different to the Tolis. Uh, thank you to Thomas Mortimer. I don't know, Thomas, if you're here today, but Thomas Mortimer is a real treasure trove of knowledge on the Airbus. Um, and Thomas said, Do you. Uh, Thomas pointed out, I should say, that the FLS in the Phoenix is a different and not quite as advanced version as the FLS in the TOLIS. There, there's two different fits. So in the Phoenix, TOLIS one, you can actually change it around, whereas in this one, uh, so you can actually select it in here. Uh, but in the Phoenix, we're going to simply turn on the LS and it should enable it. Now, I don't know what the real airplane would do, and I don't know if one of those is more or less accurate, but uh, they both work. Um, so we're going to talk about what it means, because I think the vote's winning quite well. Mert says, do you think it's a study level aircraft for type rating students? No, I don't think any aircraft is, is suitable for type rating students. Pol9, thank you again for that very generous donation. I really don't, I still don't know what to say to that. Austin Lawrence, thanks for subscribing. Uh, Christy says, FLS is super easy to do. Fly it like an ILS on an intercept heading, just arm approach. Yeah, so that's it. So when we were using Final App, the plan was to um, leave the LS buttons off at 10,000 feet get down to our platform altitude on the VOR, so descend down to 3,200 feet. Before we get to nine miles, arm the approach, and final lap would engage and fly down final lap. But there are some issues with that. It doesn't draw itself out properly. The VDEV scale will actually have level segments, it will descend, it will be all over the place, and so on. Whereas if we're using the FLS, the FMS landing system, what we'll actually see is this. We'll have the normal ILS style scales. We can arm the approach just like normal, and it will arm and capture the glide slope, and it will arm and capture a, a, effectively a localizer, an F lock. It's called a false or an, sorry, an FMS localizer and an FMS glide slope. The key thing to remember is they are not transmitted from the ground. It is showing you this, these glide slope and localizers based entirely on what it's got in its head, or on its database. That's all it's basing those on. So they are not, it's not another type of approach. It's just another type of guidance, like final app, like track FBA, like um, approach. It's a, it's a guidance type. It is nothing to do with an actual approach type. We are still flying a VOR approach. I am still required to have the VOR selected and visible, and I'm required for the VOR to be working. That is uh, a fact. Flight mode on. I didn't use CPLC in the end. I'm just gonna rewind time a bit. Sorry, everyone, but uh, yeah, I think it'd be nice to see the island in the daylight. Just a little bit. So that's what FLS is. Um, it is not using anything fancier. It is the airplane. The airplane already has this approach saved in it. If I go to flight plan, I can see that it has, here we go, the final descent point, 3,200 feet. It flies its approach down to the VOR. But what FLS will do, and I'm curious to see how FLS will work in this case because of the VOR being too close. And final app would fly you down towards it, but I'll see what FLS does. Yeah. But it's basically, should have drawn the, it's basically drawn this line out from the runway. I don't think it's going to use the VOR at all, FLS. It's just based on the database. 
Um, so I don't know what needs to be working in the airplane. I imagine it's similar to Final App in that we want things like GPS primary accuracy high to be working. Whereas to fly a VOR approach, I don't need any of those. I could fly it in track FBA and selected modes, um, but that's getting a little bit complex for, uh, for what we're talking about here. Right, let's just check that the boat is finished at that. There we go. So 124 votes, 65% have gone to uh, FLS. So that's what we're doing. Um, James says, why nothing wrong with the Phoenix and mine can't fly? I'm doing everything right, but everything on plane doesn't work. I'm wondering if hacking is happening in flight simulator. That's strange. No, it shouldn't be the case. No, I've, I've had no trouble in that sense. Uh, right. Um, <laughs> yeah, it says, I've never been trained in this kind of landing. The pilot flying on his computer. Yeah, very kids. So, uh, let's see. Pole 9, thanks so much for your 10 euro super chat. Again, Pole 9. <laughs> Lots of generous. Well, says, does Airbus navigate only on GPS and IRS gyroscopes are just a backup or do they all work together? Great question. They all work together. And we can see this if I go to data, position monitor, FMGC, FMGC. So these are the flight management guidance computers. They are using three IRS GPS. So what that means is we have three IRSs, which are those gyroscopes, laser gyroscopes, ring laser gyroscopes. They're spinning around using lasers, actually not actually spinning anymore, I don't think. But they're up there calculating where we are over the planets having been aligned. So there's three of those and then there's a GPS, there's two GPS. So each side is then using that GPS signal, mixing it up with those IRS positions to come to an average position. Then it compares them um, and you've got those two positions there and then you've got the GPS, GP IRS position there and then you can see. So each of the IRSs is actually slightly out. They're not as accurate as GPS when it's working. But if GPS fails, IRSs will carry on working. So the Airbus navigates using all of them and it can entirely navigate without the GPS. If I go data GPS monitor, here you go, uh, you can see where the GPSs are and sometimes it'll be broken in here. So if I go to data um, and we go to position monitor, select navigate, I can then deselect the GPS and have it entirely run. There we go, GPS primary lost. So the GPS is now off uh, and you'll see no GPS primary, but the accuracy of the airplane is still high. Those IRSs are good enough for us now to fly around uh, with 0.72 estimated accuracy so we know to within 0.72 of a nautical mile where we are we need to know within to within two miles now this wouldn't be very good for flying maybe an rnav approach to low minima but it's fine for what we're doing here and it would be fine for a lot of things let's go back to data position monitor select nav aids uh, we're going to select the gps gps primary and now instead of 0.72 0 0.03 super accurate when you're using gps no surprise so we like to have GPS and a lot of airlines will want GPS if you're going to fly something like an F, uh, FLS or a final lap style approach. Right, it's time to descend down. So let's start off with flight of 100. Let's see a lot of talk about this descent. So let's see how it handles at the start. You're welcome, Pole 9. Really appreciate it. Thank you again for the donation. So top of descent is arriving. You usually start down a little bit before. There's F app. That's interesting. <laughs> um, I wonder if I got rid of the LS, would that disappear? Nope, there it is. FAP's armed anyway. Uh, down we go, Des. So people are saying it's a bit aggressive at the start, but it seems okay to me so far. We are below profile, of course, so it's going to do a thousand feet per minute until it meets the profile. Grom says, do you always need to be fully configured before the final for a VOR approach? No, that's only if you're using track FBA, otherwise known as selected modes. If you're using FLS or um, final app, you don't need to. Frank says, since the FMC is a computer, is it liable to crash? I would imagine the standards for the operation are extremely rigorous. Exactly, it's extremely rigorous. So they know. They do occasionally need a reset, but they're very reliable. Uh, Ektor says, have you had a failure in real life? Yes, I have. Uh, but nothing too exciting. Now it's reaching the descent. It's nothing too aggressive. I don't see any problem here. No traffic above us, behind us. Um, that seems fine, but we know it gets a little bit slow on the speed. Thanks, Chris D. So Chris says, um, FLS is not available if the missed approach point is before the runway threshold and if the final approach course and runway course is greater than 50 degrees. Okay, interesting. We'll check that in just a moment. So thanks, Chris. I will check that. Uh, so thanks again to Pole9. 
for the very kind donation. Too close. Thank you for your 10 euro super chat. Too close. Very kind. Says thanks for the great streams, videos, and the very helpful explanations. Love your content. Greetings from Germany. Thank you so much. Uh, too close. Really, really appreciate it. Um, yeah, very kind. Glad you've been enjoying them. Greetings to you in Germany. I hope you're doing very well. Thanks so much for coming along to the stream. Great to have you here. Really, really appreciate it. And thank you for the very kind donation. Glad they've been, uh, glad they've been helpful for you. Here we go then. So this is what we know. It's getting a little bit too slow on the speed. It's not too far off, but yeah, it's a little bit, little bit out. Right, so we can't use FLS if the missed approach point isn't at the threshold. It's before... Uh, what did Chris say? Before the threshold. So what the missed approach point is, let's finish our brief of that approach. So we're flying outbound, inbound, um, and then... Uh, you know, just, let's have, just have a parking chart. There we go. Okay, good. Uh, good, they did save. Uh, so the missed approach point is when, if we're not visual, we would begin our approach. And here... And it's always going to be slightly before the threshold. Here the misapproach point is at the VOR, you see, M. So if we reach over the VOR uh, 1310 feet and we're not visual, I mean, it can't be 1310 feet, it's even higher, isn't it? 1310 feet is going to be back here. Hmm. Yeah, you need to be visual. 1310 is just after four miles, about three miles from the VOR. Let's see how it's coded in the box that we've got there. Then we've got SUDs. Yeah, so here we go. It's not going to work. We haven't got um, we haven't got the threshold. So what's happening here? And this does this is a real thing. Um, the approach is coded to the VOR, and then it goes around. It doesn't actually come back, make it all the way to the runway. We can't see runway two nine written in there. So that probably means the FLS will not work. Interesting. Yeah, I hadn't realised that. So we're going to have to forget that. However. Is my question: If you're in an airplane like this, how you surely need a way to deselect it, or would you have to fly it selected? Anyway, I'm going to solve this. Sorry, everyone, we won't be FLSing today. I have got a video on it. It's very straightforward. You literally just see it like an INS, and you have the double diamonds. Um, but it is in my video. If you go to my YouTube channel, my last video where I talk about all these different airline options in sim settings, uh, and um, all these, airline, I go through each one of these and talk about all of them. So let's get rid of FLS. That disappears from up there. Uh, now we're going to do we're going to do final lap, which I feel is more fitting for a 1950s uh, aircraft anyway. <laughs> but there we go. Sorry about that. Yeah, it looks like it wouldn't work, and I wouldn't want to, you know, have it all mess up just because I didn't know what I shouldn't be doing it. But thank you again, too close for that very kind donation. Tango says, I have a question on fuel planning uh, on long haul, five hours. When I put the fuel from Simbri, it says I had a negative value for the extra fuel. No, that shouldn't do that. Yeah. No, there's no such thing as negative. Uh, sorry, no, it can say negative extra fuel. But no, you shouldn't have negative. It just, just means that the flight planning's gone somewhere wrong. It might be your profile is a bit different in Simbri if you're not using the Phoenix profile, perhaps. Patrick says, I think you can. We do in our company. Oh, okay. So, so the reason I... Okay, this is what I mean about the FLS. I don't know what I'm doing with it. But what I'm talking about here, about that missed approach point and the threshold. See, this doesn't reach the runway. So what we couldn't do on this in, is leave the flight directors on. If this was coded all the way to the runway, you could actually... These days, we can leave the flight directors on and let the autopilot fly the airplane to 200 feet above the ground, then disconnect the autopilot and leave the flight directors on, and they'll guide you all the way to the runway, and then you just land normally, and it will triple-click and revert, uh, which is something that does work in this. But... Uh, if it's not coded to the runway, it won't. So that wouldn't work today. So this would have to be a flight director's off, bird on, set runway track sort of day. Uh, which reminds me, let's set the runway track. But now we're into a dilemma about the FLS. Does it, doesn't it work? Because there's no option to deselect it. I'm very curious. But uh, anyway, 288 inbound. I'm in two minds. I sort of think it might not work because there's no threshold, but then I also think, well, it should work because there's no way to deselect it. So surely you wouldn't have to revert to track FBA. That'd be very old-fashioned. Phoenix profile is available in their Discord. Thank you so much, Nick Sana, for the uh, 14 czars. Ah, oh, I don't know what czar are, so I do apologize. I, I, I do like to know what the, uh, 
these numbers are. It's amazing um, hearing all the different ones from around the world. But thank you for the 14s. I really appreciate it. Nick Osana says, starting with my CPL exam soon. Any advice? Um, CPL exams. So, if you, you, I assume you're talking about the theory exams. In that case, uh, it's just, I found them quite interesting. Um, some topics are more interesting than others, but just keep, just keep focused in. Don't let it get to you. There's a lot of studying to do for the CPL exams, but uh, yeah. Uh, I found a lot of it more interesting than I thought I would. Um, so, j yeah, you just got to keep at it, I'm afraid. <laughs> it does end. <laughs> South African rant. Thank you very much. Thanks um, for the that 14 South African rant. Yeah, I think we have seen that before, actually. So, but yeah, really appreciate it. But yeah, sorry, that's the only advice I can give. It's tough when you have that much um, work to get through. But uh, yeah, that's that's all I can say. Hopefully you have good instructors. Pedro, thanks for the subscription. And thank you again, uh, Nick Zeller, for the, the very kind donation. Really appreciate it. And thank you again, um, Paul Nine. I thank you too close for those very kind donations. And uh, Jano H. Right. So here we go. So, yeah, we're in this dilemma now. Is it going to work? Isn't it going to work? I feel like we could just try it. We're going to be visual, so we would effectively... In real life, I would talk about doing a visual approach. Here's the island of Crete. We've made it. Okay, here's what we're going to do. I know what we're going to do. I'm going to put a range ring around the airfield and set up for a visual. So there's the airport airfield and the runway 29. I'm going to put a six-mile radius ring around it. There's a six-mile ring. There's that blue circle there. Six miles from touchdown, uh, I want to be six, uh, 2,000 feet above the runway on a three-degree approach. You'll notice this is a slightly shallower descent, but I'm going to do a three-degree approach if I fly a visual approach. So what I'll do is I'll put in six miles, 2,000 feet above the runway, but I need to take into account the elevation. It's uh, 500 feet. So at six miles, I, at that range ring, I need to be at 2,500 feet. So this is if we fly the visual approach. Um, beautiful, beautiful graphics. So that's the backup. What I'm going to do, I'm going to enable the FLS. Let's see if it works. And if it doesn't, so we're going to be nice and slow when we do it. If it doesn't work, then it's okay. I will simply revert to visual, turn off the flight directors, turn on the birds. Uh, we'll have the speed right back, and they'll let us do that. That's going to be the plan. That's what we're going to do. So it's FLS because you guys did vote for it. Uh, and then we'll go for the um, visual. So 11,000 actually after the PLH. So let's put an 11 in the window. And uh, it does say altitude, so I assume that would be an altitude already. In which case, let's go to Q&H. Of 1012. 1012. Same as where we left, 1012. Good. Let's just check I've got that right. Do, do, do. 1012, refresh. There it is, variable 3, 1012. Okay, oh, we should have also done the landing distance calculator. Um, you do have to do that these days on every landing. So let's apply the meter. It's a dry runway. We're going to land onto runway 29. Apply the meter, landing weight. So, oh yeah, I get asked this a lot. How do we do this? So 60.6 .6 is our current weight. Um, we're going to land with 4.2, so we're going to burn 100 kilos. So we're basically landing at 60.6. .6. So let's put in 60.5. Low water brake, flat fall, manual landing, idle with auto thrust on. No issues. We need a landing distance available, 3,200 meters. We need 2,200 meters. So we've got loads of room. So this will roll us out nicely to vacate where we want. Good. Uh, we will run the approach checklist later. So we're just going to fly the arrival as it is for now. But yeah, we can convert this to a visual as and when we see fit. Pulp 9, thanks so much for the 10 euros super chat again. Pulp 9 says, does the manual gear extension work in Phoenix? Yes, it does. I won't do it now because it's not you can't put it back in manual gear extension. But yes, it does indeed work. It does indeed work. Here we go, arriving. So we have to be 11,000 feet because we're about to carve over the island. It's very tall mountains on the island, often covered in snow. It's quite amazing. FGS, amazing. Yep, so FMS glides. So in our FCOM, 
Patrick says, it states if FLS function is not available, it will say no FLS for this approach on Scratchpad and it is explained how the beam is computed when the missed approach point is before. Okay. Well, we'll see. We'll see if it works. It may or may not work. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I don't know it. So thank you to those willing to give up their advice. And I appreciate um, nobody's necessarily wrong or right. People will be trained differently. Airplanes will have different fits. Airlines will have different settings. So there's no... I, I um, Yeah. Thank you both for, for giving the input because I actually have no idea with it. There you go. Thakros says, V1 did a manual gear extension in the Phoenix about a week ago. Yeah. To do a manual gear extension, by the way, you click this up and then you turn it three times. But I'm not going to do that because you can't put it back. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful scenery. Breathtaking. Let me get the replay tool. Right, so constraints are up on the QNH. There's the islands. So there's the runway. We're going to head overhead. Okay, right overhead. I love the wind farms as well. Wind farms stand out very well when you're flying. So great to see them modeled so well in Microsoft Flight Simulator now. Common flat setting for takeoff. Well, flat one on long runways, but it can be higher and it does depend on the airlines. I use Flight Recorder for replay. I have not flown to South America. That's something we must do on the channel. The Ram Air Turbine is modelled. Frank Gary, it is modelled. I think I showed it in one of my videos, but yes, that is modelled. Something we can see in a future stream. Uh, Captain Retro, if you want to load in the flight plan automatically, uh, this is something it does where it keeps changing speed. There's something else that he's, um, he's looking into. Uh, yeah, you need to have gone to MCDU menu, ATSU, AOC flight init and then click initialize you must do that and make sure you don't need the hoppy a cars code but you do need your sim brief code so make sure you're using the right sim brief ID uh, right we're getting a bit high now so I'm actually gonna put in the 3200 feet platform and let the airplane do it so there's 3200 there's out magenta it's gonna level off at 6,000 for a bit that's fine it thinks it's a bit high no surprise there Right, let's go to, is it over there still? No, oh, it ran out. Whoops, maps are full, plug that one in. <laughs> it's amazing that simulated. Let's go back to our checklist. So approach checklist, ECAM status is checked. Airplane's behaving. Approach type and runway, we're gonna do an FLS approach onto runway 29 in Harnia. Minima, we've got 1310 barrier set because it's still just a VOR. And I'm gonna activate the approach phase now. Actually, no, no, it's a bit early. So we're just gonna hold it there. Just gonna hold it there. Thank you, Stick Forget, for the follow. Right, cover your ears, we're gonna go outside for a second. Right, we're back in. Okay. I'm going to start missing lots and lots of chats. Uh, so apologies for that, but it's going to get quite busy now. So we're arriving over here at the airfield. We have traffic above us, but they are hopefully monitoring us on TCAS to <laughs> stay just behind. We're going to head outbound, then back inbound, and it's going to fly the constraints itself. We're flying the FLS, so we actually turn on the LS buttons. And let's have that set to VOR2. So we need the VOR as a backup. There we go. 
and you can see here FLS appears runway 29 2.7 degrees slightly shallower so it has calculated the same angle as the um, the VOR was meant to be the link for delivery should be pinned on uh, YouTube poll 9 or if you put an exclamation mark delivery the cloud bot oh the cloud bot's on to sleep sorry about that it should have been giving you that if you needed it apologies hopefully that will work for you now Uh, right, so let's bring up the approach chart. Use us to see where we are as well. well. I'm going to just lower the brightness a bit, which we can do in settings. Just a bit, there we go. Right, airfield just down here. There it is. Middle runway we're aiming for. Oh, there's some traffic on the grounds. Beautiful evening, look at the water. Ah, oh, stunning, 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 stunning. Earth shadow starting to appear. Let's get those landing lights on. The, the fixed spots do work best when you're in the um, actual white space. Right, so we're heading outbound. Ah, that's interesting. What mode am I in? There's, there we go, there we go, 3,200, that's what I expect it to be. <laughs> And it's going to start flying these constraints. But what I'm going to do is activate the approach phase. There we go. Approach phase active. Back to our checklist. Approach phase active. Power FQ and H1012. That is the approach checklist complete. Next is the landing checklist. EFB just amazing. Peter, Gores, thanks so much for your five year super chat. Really appreciate it, Peter. Very kind of you. Uh, Peter says, here comes the scary part. Exactly, yep. <laughs> here we go. Well, I'm curious to see what happens. But as I said, we have a backup. This mile at 2,500 feet at that point there. So zoom in. And if I wanted to just fly around here, I just descend to be 2,500 feet as we get there. That would be our visual approach. We are on 1228, so I'm just going to broadcast. Harnia traffic, Manta 311, outbound, VOR, runway 29. Just letting people know where we are in the procedure. Thank you, Richard B. Richard B. for finding the delivery link there. Yeah, thank you again, Pieta, for that very kind uh, donation. Really appreciate it. So we've got 4.2 tons of fuel, plenty of fuel for the go around. Oh, we didn't quite finish <laughs> setting up. So, performance page, we need to put in the go around altitude there. We're going to do a flat floor landing, as we've discussed. The go around altitude is 3,000 feet initially and then 6,000 feet later. So, I'm going to do 3,000 feet in here. If we need it, I'll call go around flaps. Thrust levers through to Togo, move the flaps in one stage, positive climb, gear up, make sure the FMAs are all correct, uh, and then we need to push. No, we should have nav in the go around. I think I set it up, so it should say nav. If not, we'll push it, fly around, and uh, follow the blue line, and then just fly the procedure as required. Right, 185 knots for this turn, so let's slow down. Speed's good, flaps to one. Out they come. It's just to keep your radius for this turn in sense. Round we go. Oh, it's getting a little bit darker than I hoped, but we'll see what it looks like as we come around the corner. Pol 9, thank you so much for the 10 euro super chat. Pol 9, I, st I still don't know what to say. Thank you, really far too kind. Thank you so much. Pol 9 says, not scary. I trust our captain. Thank you, Pol 9. Really appreciate it. Let's see what happens. <laughs> so this is an interesting approach because um, I haven't really talked about it as much as I thought I would. Uh, yeah, there's hills on this side and then it's also on a cliff so what you don't want to do when you have an airfield like this that's on 500 foot elevation but you're approaching over the water you need to remember that so i know i don't want to descend too early too far out because i could get myself into trouble um as we reach the cliff phase and then realize we're actually a bit lower than we thought so you've got to account for the elevation of the airfield even though there's no terrain beneath us it can be a little bit disorientating there's two runways. I don't think the real Crete has that, but we want to be in the middle one. Notably, the sun is still up, so this counts as uh, this isn't even nighttime or twilight yet. This is still daylight. Right, 3,200 feet. We should start our descent from here uh, at about nine miles. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to press that, and there it is. Out star F glide slope and F lock. F lock star F glide slope star. So it behaves exactly like an INS, exactly like it. Ten miles out. So actually, I think it's giving us the distance to the runway as well. 9.9, .9, yeah, 10.1, very close to it. 
we shall see how it works out. I'm going to put the Gurren Altitude in the window, again, just like an INS. I am going to put the Heading Bug around. It shouldn't be a Heading Bug. That's interesting. I've never seen that. But I, again, I've not used the FLS mode. So you can see it's also drawn out the magenta line, so it draws out the localizer. Manta 311 inbound uh, for landing runway 29, currently 8 miles at Harnia. 3,000 feet at 9 miles from the runway. So that's a little bit low, remember? Um, because I want to be 500 feet above normal. So at 9 miles, I think 3,500 feet. But let's be sensible here. We're only doing 2.7 degrees, so we are a little bit closer in than that. Notably, the Pappies are shown on the left runway. There's the traffic following us in. Let's go to flap 2. Altitude warning horn. Again, wouldn't expect that necessarily, but there we go. It could be in the FLS mode. We shall see what happens. Uh, we can check our deeming. So 6 miles from the VOR, we would be 2342. So 6 miles from the VOR, we just passed 100 feet high. So actually a tiny bit high according to this profile. Very interesting visual picture. 6 miles to landing. Let's configure. Gears down. Let me start recording. Too late. Should have started that earlier. Arm the ground spoilers. Nose lights on. Seatbelt should have come on a while back. <laughs> And flaps to three. And flaps to four. Let's go to our. Let's yeah, so pretty sensible. Landing checklist. Order brake is on low. Missed approach altitude 3000 feet is set. Eco memo. Landing there blue. We're clear to land because it's just us here. 2000 feet. Four miles to go. Yeah, that's about right. 500 feet above what we would normally be. So Top Gun says LS should be off for RNAV, why is it on? So we're doing a VOR today, not an RNAV, and we're using the FLS system today where you would have the LS buttons on. That is the difference today, yeah. But this is not a system I'm used to, so I'm, I know you need these buttons on for it to work, but uh, yeah, it's not what I usually use. There's the runway, got the green taxi light lights, but no pappies, sadly the pappies only for the left, but we'll see what this guidance gives us. I'll be very curious to know now. George says, I served there on the NATO base just outside the airport. Very good. Yeah. Thank you for for, um, for doing so. But, uh, yeah. yeah. 100 above. Right. Looking sensible. 600 feet per minute. So, remember, this is a 2.7 degree glide. So, a slightly lower rate of descent is about normal. We are recording. Minimum. So, camera down. Right. Let's see if we can get this right. We're stable. So, I'm just really curious what the guidance will give us. So if this was final app, I would now take out the flight order pilot, so I'm going to do that. I would also turn off the flight directors uh, and I would um, put the bird on because it's not coded to the threshold. So the flight directors would become useless after the VOR. But actually you'd probably be able to see the VOR. 1,000. They're usually quite visible. Maybe it's there. Anyway, we're still stable. Let's focus on the landing. No pappies at all. Keeping that rate of descent. Gone a bit high on the rate of descent. So let's get it back to about 600. There we go, it's getting a little bit confused. I'm not sure that's giving us good guidance now. I'm going to fly it visually. Definitely crossing the threshold high. <laughs> 100. Okay, back to a normal rate of descent. 50, 40, 30, 30 flare. 20, retard. Idle. Engine's pulled up Five. a bit, so just holding it there. There's touchdown. Reverses out, letting the nose come down, letting the auto rotate the strain. Reverse green decel, I should say ground spoilers. We don't want that exit. <laughs> I don't think those center line, those exit lights are much used anyway. And there we go. So yeah, so FLS definitely wasn't giving useful guidance as we crossed the threshold. We were uh, uh, definitely high there. That would have been three to four whites on the pappies had they been there. Um, so that's something uh, definitely to take note. So I wonder, I still don't know. We don't know whether that would have worked in real life or not. There you go, disconnecting the auto brake. But yeah, fun to see. So there you go, that's the FLS. It's it's great. It just flies, it flew the whole approach be beautifully. It just wasn't useful for the final bit, which would make sense because it wasn't coded correctly to the threshold. Uh, whether you could do that in real life on this style of approach, I really don't know. Right, speed back. Welcome to Harnia. Speed right back. It's very hard to judge your speed after a landing because, of course, you've been going at hundreds of knots. Forward idle. What we're going to do, we're going to park up and shut down properly. 
And then I'm going to use the panel states to reload for the replay. That's something we uh, someone pointed out to me you can do, which I didn't even think of. Vacation the runway, landing lights can come off, strobe lights back to auto. Let's get the APU up and running. We're going to go taxi over at the main apron. Pioneer Traffic Manta 311 runway vacated. Thanks for those follows. If you are watching on YouTube and you enjoyed the flight, do please hit the like button. It makes a huge, huge difference to the channel. So three seconds after the master switch, we can turn on the APU. And yeah, we're going to head straight into the apron here. We'll go park up next to the other traffic. Thanks Skofa, for the follow. I uh, really appreciate it. Thank you all for coming along. Do you use reverses on dry runways in EFB? It doesn't show much difference. No, you would not use max reverse on a dry runway typically because, as you say, it makes no difference. It's used more in wet runways or with contamination. However, after landing, you'll always select idle reverse like that at least. We always select reverse um, because it provides some level of deceleration and helps put the weight on wheels and all sorts, even at idle. But it's max reverse we don't necessarily select. Christy says, in real life, FLS wouldn't have worked in that landing as the missed approach point is before the runway. FLS guidance you saw was not correct. FLS gives you perfect flight that guidance all the way to touchdown. So yeah, so this, all to, this is all to do with the missed approach point. It's a technical aspect that I will talk about in a future video if I can work it out. Uh, we'll talk about it with final app because that's what I know about. Um, but yeah, it's clear that there's um, there's more study to be done on that. And that's, that's uh, my... That, you know that's on me because i i don't know the fls so but hopefully i've been clear about that oh yeah spoilers go flaps in <laughs> we're gonna park here this is some of the strangest uh taxi lines we've ever seen so after landing we've got the steel lights off we've got the flaps at zero disarm those ground spoilers we can turn off the radar transponder can go to standby i'm not sure where this line takes us <laughs> we'll just get ourselves over parked um, APU is available. Eboss says, another great landing in a beautiful place. Thanks for the flight, Captain. You all have a good one. Thanks very much, Eboss. Thanks for coming along. I appreciate it. All right, we're going to stop here. Yeah, this is some of the worst default airport markings I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, good, so APU is available. We did get those flaps up and the spoilers up. So let's shut it down. Engine two. Engine one. Seatbelts off get the clunk there's a big clunk as the generator swap over I love it such a great detail that let the engine spool down to something sensible thanks for these subscriptions Dimitri Atta disabled beacon off now and we can put the transponder in Europe normally 2000 that's the code for logging off and then standby and yeah cool Fuel pumps can go off as well at this point. If you're doing a longer turnaround, they don't have to on shorter turnarounds. Some airlines will leave them on. And we would do. Oh, we can even deboard. Look at that. But we're not going to do that. Um, we do after landing. Steer lights are uh, set. Flaps are ground spoilers disarmed. APU weather radar TCAS we're done. Uh, yellow electric pumps off. Engines are off. Cabin doors should be disarmed now. If I don't have that selected, it will automatically show us. There we go. Disarmed. Beacon off. Seatbelts are off. Transponder 2000 to buy. So. Welcome everybody. Oh, look at that. The cones are in place as well. Welcome to Hania. I hope you've enjoyed the stream. As I said, do please leave a like if you did enjoy it. And uh, thank you so much for taking the time to come along with us today. And thank you to those of you who so kindly donated uh, and everyone just chatting and watching along. Really appreciate it. Um, what we're going to do now is let's see if we can get the panel states to work and do the replay. It's something we haven't tried yet. So I'm going to stop the recording. Jackson says, if there's no ATC on VATSIM, you could always ask Default Sim ATC for taxi to parking or gates. It would be a nice addition to have ground crew welcoming you. Oh, yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Johan says, how good was your first ever real practice landing in 1820? I, I think it was okay. I don't expect it was anything special. <laughs> the winter fences do look like candy on this livery. Yeah, they do indeed. They do indeed. Um, I had done go-arounds in the Phoenix, and it has worked for me, Marcus. So I'm not sure what's happened there. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, right, okay, so let's try it out. So we're going to do Phoenix. This is a total experiment, so if this doesn't work, apologies. Uh, let's go to ready. Activate. Hmm. That is interesting. That's presumably because the APU was turned off. <laughs> okay, let's try. What's it doing? Oh, look at the screens. Just amazing. The way the light bleeds. I wonder what's going to happen now. It's set it to the engines on. So I'm going to leave it alone and just see what it does. I think it might work.
Okay, says it takes a couple of seconds to get ready. I think that's fair enough. There we go, look, engines are running. Let's put the flaps to full. That's good stuff. The panel state stuff is very good. Very impressed with it. Let's just rewind time so we get a bit more representative of what our weather was like on the approach. Those computers will come online. There we go. Flaps were at full. Let me think. Gear was down. Auto brakes were low. Um, we can arm the spoilers. They were armed. This is a bit like repositioning the full simulators that we use for, for training, actually. <laughs> um, so gear is down. Thrust levers would be at climb. Let's do it. So they'll go to climb. Let's take the parking brake off. And let's press replay. There we are. Right. So, do we want to see the replay from outside? Let's do it. Let's do it. Why not? Now, the engines will get. Oh, it's too loud. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think we've disconnected from Vatsum Water Man. No, we haven't. Disconnected. Whoops. <laughs> um, yeah, so let's do. Drone follow mode off. Drone speed up. There we go. Still my favorite view from X-Plane. That we don't get to enough of in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Slow that down. Increase that. See if we can capture it. All right, let's give it a go. There it was. That looked fine to me. Seemed all right. Beautiful sunset. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Look at that. Love the shadow as well. Right. Let's stop the replay. This is getting really confusing now. <laughs> let me arm the ground spoilers. And let me go replay. Right. Let's go to suitable view that is suitable to me and let's pause the replay okay right I think we got there right so once again <laughs> that's the replay tool commanding the thrust to try and force us to um to make up the speed but yeah thank you all so much for coming along sorry if i missed any questions do please come to another stream and i'll do my best we've had a lot of a lot of uh, viewers today so i really appreciate that apologies i haven't managed to to answer all of them but thank you so much for coming along i'm glad you've enjoyed the streams uh, thank you for all those very very kind messages uh, in the chat um i've really enjoyed it of course as always and uh yeah we'll do plenty more we need to go to south america and fly around different parts of the world of course um so i look forward to that thank you all for coming along thank you for chatting thank you to the moderators for looking after us so well both on youtube and twitch thank you for those who've commented on youtube and twitch thank you for the, just watching along anyway and thank you of course to those who've kindly donated very very generous donations really really appreciate it thank you all so much um thank you to everyone for watching along we'll see you again in another video or live stream soon do please have a great evening and we'll see you again next time i appreciate there's a bit of buffering now so sorry for that but <laughs> we're at the end so i'll let the replay run outro music's coming thank you all see you next time Bye-bye.